Depot or visit our website, www.fistinstallation.com. And that's www.fistinstallation.com. We all need WMG Radio. Are you ready for the ultimate sports show? That's not just about facts and stats, but one that's involved ever getting more. I want to hear from you. I'm King Brody, ruler of the Orioles and the Ravens fan, and I want to find out who's not a fan of the Orioles and the Ravens. I want to hear from you on Monday night from 7.30 to 9.30. Please call in. You will love them. Only on WMEG. And also like, follow, and share. Troy Team Brody on Facebook. Again, it's Troy Team Brody so you can interact with me. And again, welcome to Birdland with King Brody. My next guest in the man is going to put together some rules that'll make you want to move. Put your hands together for Mr. King. We good? We, we good. good. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Birdland. It is I, King Brody, man. Ruler of this kingdom, man. I love to call Birdland. And I got my, my son over here by the name. I like to call him Sir Rock, the knight of the sound table. Y'all can call him DJ Rock. Nice. Give it up. What's up, King Brody? What's up, man? We about to have a good time today, man. We got a we got a lot to go. We got our Oreos, man. Yes. Got some good news and some bad news with them. Okay. We got the AFC North we're gonna talk about today. Okay. You like Pittsburgh? <laughs> you like Cincinnati? You like Cleveland? We're gonna talk about them. I like to beat up on them. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna talk about them, man. You know what's bad, Troy? What's that? Like, any day of the week, I can have regular conversations with people, mm -hmm. and we just have a conversation. Every Tuesday, and I'm having a conversation with someone, mm -hmm. the first thing they be like, oh, it's Tuesday. I'm like, what's so special about Tuesday? She be like, playing. <laughs> and he be like, yo, y'all coming on tonight? So my life revolves around Tuesdays now. Good. Do they know that <laughs> WMEG seven days a week? That's true, man. You every day, but Tuesday the main night though. Yes, and I love look. I love the WMEG family. Tuesday's the main night, man. And it's just funny to me because it's like it can be male and female. And the reason why I distinguish between male and female because most females are not sports fans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the fact that <laughs> me Tuesdays belong to Birdland, like. Come on, man. So. Man, look, let me tell you. And look, just to let y'all know real quick, the entire WMEG lineup is hot, man. It's hot. I listen to it all the time. And let me just, let me, in fact, let me put this out real quick. You can listen to them seven days a week, rockmeg1.com. Is that right? Yep. Rockmeg1, R O C M E G, the number one. Dot com. There you go. All this, now, my favorite way, I love the tune in act, though, man. Because when I'm in the car, I I can I can just I can kick it all around. I just kick it all around in my car, man. And plus, I got set up on the TuneIn app too. But and you also um, uh, you can go on Rock Mag Nation. Is it Rock Mag? Am I saying it right? That Facebook page. Yeah, Rock Mag Nation. Rock Mag C M E G one word Nation second word. 
on Facebook. Yes. Yes. You catch my show there and also on the King Brody page, too. And I'm seeing of all kings. That's right. That's important. Along with the Lord of all lords. That's right. That's every right. Tuesday. It's all important. Y'all need to know all this, man. Yes. Plus, let me let y'all know, because a lot of things are happening right now. If y'all want to advertise, y'all want to promote something, this is definitely a good way to do it. Let me give you the phone number, 443-267-6558. If you want to promote something on this show or any time or all the time, however you want to do it, this is this is a great way to get a lot of news out there and a lot of things out there because we have gone to we've gone to a lot of events, man. Just just this year, yeah. Just this year alone, we've gone to a lot of stuff, and we got a lot more coming up, which we'll 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 talk about later. But um, I'm telling y'all, if you want to get the word out, call call a militant midget. That's right, the gangster assassin, the enforcer, Nicole. I don't know if she's listening. Hmm. But uh wait a minute, I, I got a pic let me let me let keep yourself fool. Let me scan her picture up here real quick. Wait a minute, I thought I left it close by. She is she she's not nearby, right? Okay. The gangster assassin here she go real quick. Break yourself fool. <laughs> Do not mess around. She will look out for you though. <laughs> but uh yeah, hook the gangster sec. Give her a call, 443-267-6558. And uh, there's she a lot of what she do, do, man. She, 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 we got to give her our props. I, I, I do, I do. Plus, she has her own show. Her show Saturday at nine a.m. Nine in the morning, man. She puts out some information, and you, you kind of, you kind. That's another thing, man. You were saying that um, people ask you, talk to you about Tuesday. Do you talk more on any other show? No. That that might be part of it, man. They're looking for you too. They're looking forward. I hear you a little bit on uh, on on the call. I hear you a little bit there. That gives me three point seven minutes. Um, <laughs> every Saturday, that's all you get. Three point seven minutes. And she be like, "All right, DJ Rock." I be like, "You know what? You need finish up." Yeah, I was just getting to the climax. <laughs> and then April gave me like one point four because she don't bring like her whole family where like. One family on your block tree, and I understand you grew up in the city because we both grew up in Emerson Village. Right. You right. always got that one family on the block that you don't want to mess with because you know some have with one of them about thirteen oh, and other have all of them. Yeah. It's the white head. <laughs> man, listen. Every week April got a claim with them, man. I was cool with the mama because the mama a sweetie, right? Uh huh. But man, she got like a slew of sisters. She got a big head brother. Then she got like another relative that live out of state. Then she got a bunch of nephews and some nieces. It's a whole bunch of them in that white head clan. Man, and then the one person we wanted to hear about, she did. She didn't want to talk. Nah, she, she wouldn't would let us hear his voice. Yeah, she wouldn't. You know what? He probably was scared to speak up because it's a whitehead claim. You said the wrong thing, man. You know I'm sure. You know what happens with sure people around here. Joking. Oh, man. You know what? We need to have a theme, a, a short theme song. Yeah, we're going to get one. You can slide one on her. Don't even tell her. Yeah, you slide it in. But you got to call in that day when I do it so okay. we can explain. We're going what? Thursday. We're going to work it all this together. Thursday? Yes. Okay, y'all need to speak. Bring the clan in with her on Thursdays. Okay. Man, listen. And then they be jacking the station for their snacks. They be like, Debo. <laughs> when he came, he was trying to tuck in chain. I be forgetting. I be wanting to take the snack bowl and like, had it. <laughs> Man, listen. Them white heads, something terrible, boy. I tell you. What's up, Cicely and Bob? I see y'all that joined us. I'm sorry I catch y'all earlier. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Shout out to Bob. Yeah, Bob. We've been looking for you, Bob. I, I'll talk a little while, a little later on about the weigh-in, man. We did the weigh-in already, Bob. Are uh, you trying? Are you trying to get in our weight loss competition? I'm a, 113 pounds. What is he going to lose? And, and he's six two or something. Yeah. Bob's kind of tall. The way his mustache and hair puts more weight on his. Oh, body. he lose. Yeah, he'd be ten pounds lighter right off as soon as he leaves the barbershop. But that would take away. He makes a lot of money with that look, though. I know. Yeah, Bob ain't with shade. Mary in the bomb. No, he was no detective. He, he uh chief chief man. Let me tell you, I need I need to I need to play a clip. I need to find a clip from him. Yeah, he's a he's a bad guy. Oh okay, but you don't know he's a bad guy. I didn't know he was a bad guy. Wait, man, I'm at BWI headed to you going to Texas, and he thinks D Hop just got off the plane. Stop it. Where they go? He said, he said, if not, he has a tear. 
He must have a twin. He, he, he ain't letting that, that man fly on commercial. Right. He just said the play to go yeah, get him. He just sent something to go get him. Unless you saw him coming through uh, uh, at baggage claim or something. Claim. He just he, he, <laughs> the man. They slings would have picked him up on the tall man. Yeah. Yeah, let me keep us inspired, Bob. Yeah, man, I'm feel, I'm feeling good. I, I'm feeling better about that. Mm-hmm. Before we get into, because I'm down to talk about that, and I'm down to talk about the Orioles. I'm gonna wait if anything happens, because the Orioles will be starting. Uh, it's been already started. They may have already. They, in fact, they should have started. The Guardians. Yeah, they should should have started. So y'all, y'all keep me in. Uh, let me know. I'm gonna try to check, but in case something happens. Uh, let me know how we're doing with us. They're right. downtown or they in, in, they're here. Okay. Yeah, they they go out of town. So actually, they're supposed to start. I thought at six thirty-five, but I think it was a little later. But um, I think it was seven. I think they just started seven o five. I could be wrong. But before we get into all of that, man, that you had a topic you wanted to bring up that you wanted to talk about. Yeah. We gonna get it. We gonna get to to a little little. We need to have a right. Beans on, man. That gonna be your thing. We need to have uh. Like like young and the wrestlers kind of okay. We got yeah, something. Um, yeah, we gotta have something. But just what you do tonight? <laughs> it, yes. All right, tell it, fill us in. For those that that has been laying under a rock and not aware of what's going on, uh, we want to discuss the Travis Rudolph trial. For those that don't know what's going on, Travis Rudolph is an ex NFL player. He played for the Giants. He also played for the Dolphins. Twenty seven years old. He's on trial for murder. What happened was. Him and his girlfriend um, got into an argument. They was approaching his home. And when they got to his house, um, when he knocked on the door, his brother opened the door. His words was, don't let this bitch in our house, right? Mm -hmm. She then proceeded to put hands on him, Mm -hmm. right? She gave him the good one, too. And good, southern, respectable hospitality, he turned to her and restrained her. And escorted her over to the porch far enough that she he could close the door. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. She then proceeded to call and text her brothers. And the message she gave to them was, go over to Travis House and shoot his shit up. Right? Mm-hmm. So the brothers, being good loyal brothers, obliged. Right? Mm-hmm. They arrived at Travis House. They knocked on the door. Travis brother comes to the door. Right? They said, where is Travis? We're here for Travis. The brother said, he's not coming out. They said it again, and the brother said, it's not going to happen. He's not coming out. So they proceeded to jump on the brother. Mm -hmm. So it's for them, one brother, and they're beating the brother up. So Travis comes outside, right? Right. When Travis comes outside, one of the guys standing there, which happened to be the brother, pulls out his gun. So Travis said, oh, that's how we playing this? He goes back in the house and gets his gun. Mm-hmm. The only problem was his gun was a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. And he proceeded to let off 39 rounds, killing one of the brothers, injuring the other. The two other guys that was with him wasn't harmed. But he's now on trial in Florida for murder. How many How many guys total came in? Four. And two, two of them didn't get anything. Right, but two of, had, and two, two of them had guns. Wow. I knew one of the brothers had a gun. I don't know who if the other one was the other brother or if it was one of the other dudes they called. But two of them had guns. Mm-hmm. Travis proceeded to go in his house to get his AR-15. And he came back out and went to work. Shot off 39 times. And this was in Florida? In Florida. The stay in your ground state now. We didn't mention your part. Mm. Mm. The stay in your ground state. Y'all remember? And, yeah. And... <laughs> This listen, this man claimed staying your ground and he was walking down the street somewhere he didn't even live. Right. And he got off. Right. This man was at his house minding his business. And he came to his house. Mm. Not with a candy bar, but with guns. And laws. Oh, they lost tragically. And I, I'm not condoning violence, but I am condoning protecting your own. Hey. Send to come to his house. He didn't even have a disagreement with them. Mm-hmm. And not to mention, he didn't even cause harm to their sister that they want to uphold and protect. Was she there too at the time? No. No. Nah, she she, she, wasn't she was gone already. Okay. But she sent them back there. Baby girl, your brothers ain't the only ones in this world that's tough. Wow. Wait a minute. 
I don't mean to interrupt. Quick shout out to the queen. And one thing Bob said, he said, instead of young and the restless, you are old and rested. That's <laughs> <laughs> because I left as soon as I saw it. I didn't want to do trick. But but yeah, this is that's a serious um that's serious, man. I mean, I hate to see, you know, I hate to see people kill like that, but I mean, yeah, man, we've all been in, in situations, I'm gonna say, I think younger. I remember, I remember um I hit a girl with a with a baseball, not on purpose. I I hit a foul ball mm -hmm. and it hit her. And she got mad. And she wanted to go tell her brother if I didn't apologize and all that. And I was like, but I, as soon as it hit, I was like, excuse, you know what I mean? But now keep in mind, I'm like 12, man. She was, she, first of all, she was like 16. She could have beat me anyway. Right. But it was like, now you got that, that, okay, do I, what do I do? You can't win. Do I fight her before she gets to her brother? Who's going to beat me up to the whole family problem? You know, like you just said, they're going to line up. I got no brothers and sisters, not that I care, but I was like, this is what we do, and everybody's ooh and instigating and all that. You know what I mean? Right. But it comes a time, man, when you grow up. You know what I mean? You 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 you're grown ass people. And if it now if now maybe she lied, maybe you know I you 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 watching the trial, you you saw, yes. you know maybe she told him that he that he did more than what he did. I don't know because I mean I'm gonna defend if 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 my wife's in a situation, my mom's in a situation. Probably not going to ask any questions. I don't know if I'm going to come shooting guns blazing or whatever. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm going to do something. It depending on what they tell me. But I I don't know, man. Oh, thank thank you, Bob. I got brothers down. And wanted to what? I'm not sure which is. I'm not sure which is happening there. Oh, a one was referring to the young lady you hit the ball with. Oh. Oh, there's a delay. Never mind. No, she <laughs> she ain't no crush. She got crushed on that ball. <laughs> she ain't got no crush. And and I mad about the ball because it should have been a home run anyway. I missed it. That ball was supposed to go out down in the woods. And you know, we're playing on Stokes Drive, that field. Okay. Not the not the baseball field. The little grassy part. Yeah. The bottom. Yeah. So she was in it. she shouldn't have been where she was. Now had we been on the other field. I don't know. Wasn't that hard, man, but Anyway, I see the queen. Wait, hey, queen. Oh, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Since you look at queen, I got something for you real quick. Let, let me just show you your, uh, for those who don't know, if I ever, if I ever put this up, that's all in reference to the queen. I'm try, I try to cover all her needs right there. You see that, right? Wow. So I try, I try to put up something and recognize everything that she care about. Notice I'm not on that. <laughs> Me either, George. No, no, no. <laughs> but she's like, oh, she's stuck in the office. So she making the trivia? Uh, she said no trivia today. Oh, she okay. She approved. She approved. Okay. And then Bob is up there talking about 12-year-old Troy with an afro. I didn't have a beard. I didn't have a beard. But um shout out to Wink Winks in the building. Wink? What's up, Wink? 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 I like Wink in baseball season. He's awful quiet in baseball season. These moves don't work in baseball season. Well, we're all on the same team. I know. Oh, so that's we're, we're all in the same gang. Isn't that how that song went? Yes. What's up, Wink? Man, glad to see you. I gotta I gotta put a Wink picture up, a Bob. I gotta get all Wink, send me a picture, man, that you want me to post. Or I can just you know what? No, I'm gonna use the Baltimore Bomb picture for both of y'all. For you and um and Bob. I'm gonna take something from that scene. I'll just do a screenshot. Oh, okay. And that way I can pick. And then I'll get a new picture. Well, no, you're here. I don't need another picture. I right. I do need to delete this. I'll just take off sometimes. I don't want to be here with you every week. Yes, you do, man. Yeah. But, it, oh, yeah, that gangster be here. Gangster assassin. She going to do it, or you telling me there's no show? It, it might so, be no show. Girl, we going to talk about you. She going to push She gonna push some buttons that ain't supposed to be pushed. <laughs> I'm going to have all kinds of rock memes up here, man. But anyway, we're going we gonna to follow that. Um, we're gonna follow that trial. Yeah, and, I, and my prayers go out to him and his family. Mm -hmm. I'm not being judgmental. I'm, I'm not saying that the brother shouldn't have protected their honor. What I'm saying is it could have been handled in a different way. Mm -hmm. And and especially you you know your sister. Tell me you don't know your sister, Troy. You know your sister. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you 
fights with her. Yeah. You you know your sister. If she's a firecracker, don't just be flying off the handle. You know, because you've been fighting her for years. For years. Yeah. Yes. You know your sister, man. And we living in a different day and age right now. And and right now, this man, his life is gone. Because even if he's acquitted right now, what team is going to pick him up? Yeah. You, you I see? mean, yeah. You, so you just changed the dynamics of that family because your sister want to be in her feelings. And honestly speaking, you know, I, we don't know the whole scenario which caused them to argue. But just in her reaction alone, I could see where it was. He wasn't an aggressor at all. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He, he, so he, he was a little disrespectful by calling her a bitch. But even still, y'all both angry at time and he's trying to get away from you. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm, I'm just saying, I hope that, that the law falls the way it's supposed to mm-hmm. and this young man is acquitted. Um, even though I yeah. feel it's an open shut case, I'm, I'm not judging you. Well, keep, yeah, keep watching it in case something comes out that, that we don't know about. Quick shout out. Bob says he is free Friday evening for birthday dinner at Texas Roadhouse. His 65th birthday, man. Sounds like you to go out. Friday night works for me. Oh, I'm quick. I saw something pop up. Uh, we need to find out if everybody's free. I think Friday, I'm pretty sure Friday works. Queen, I think she's free, but I can't speak for the Queen. I just put a picture of that, that little montage up that I have. We'll talk about that, Bob. Hey, do you know, how do you block, uh, do, since I'm um on your live feed, do I have access to block people? <laughs> So I can't believe <laughs> nah, you just like that's about it. Can I suggest some blockage? Who, who? And since you're the administrator, who's that? Who you block? Uh, I don't want to say it because we publicly on Facebook, but I'm gonna give you the initials. Give me the initials. The initials. Uh huh. Nicole Moten. We can't block Nicole. We can't block the gangster assassin. I'd be scared to block Nicole. What day? What day? Oh, I missed something. She said, "What day is this? What day is she talking about?" It doesn't matter. We want to block her. I don't want to block you, Nicole. Say it one more time so I know what you're talking about. You want to give, we want to give her restricted access. Nah, come on in here. We need her to only be able to watch. She the can't comment. Assassin. We don't want her to comment. Yeah, I like her comments. You know, you gonna, she's going to be sitting right there next to you. You're going to be in trouble, man. Sure. Are we on the same team? Are we Batman and Robin? Mm, you look like a joker right now. I'm on your side. I'm on your side, gangster. We did they get a load of me? <laughs> Look, yo, let me roll it to now. I'm, we, I'm serious. If we're going to keep up with that trial. We're going to bring that up I'm yes. next week. I'm going to roll it to the um, Oreos real quick. Is that cool? Okay. Um, one more time. Let me see. No. Mm-hmm. Let's be the price is right. So, uh, all right, let's see you just sent the picture, too. Uh, what day y'all talking about me doing the show? Oh, we're not. Yeah, I'll let you know. We're not. Rock was talking about taking a break. We're not. And he's saying that, that when he's not here, he may we just may cancel the show. But I think we should do it without him. Troy, is this a purple the king hat? Yeah, I wore this. Beat. This ain't new. This ain't new. Only because I had on the purple shirt. I'm glad you recognize. Recognize. So y'all see this? Wait a minute. Let me just put that right there so y'all can see. Troy. Y'all see the game. Man. He talking about this. Troy. Y'all see the shit. And so on your Facebook page that you made somebody some other stuff. I'm just going to say their names because I don't want to cause no controversy. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to say their initials so <laughs> we don't have no, no beef between the shows, okay? I don't know what you're talking about, bro. We got How Johnny Lane get a, a Johnny Lane shirt? Oh, we got Oreo stuff. Uh-oh. Y'all, we have, we, somebody's knocked on the door. Make sure everything's safe. Is it safe? We're about to get it. Y'all can see on the camera. Look oh, no, nah, no. Nah, he can't come in, Troy. He can't come in? He can't come in. Y'all see the camera over there. Come in. Passport. Yeah. Oh, oh. Everything. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. What? We got a special guest in here. My man, can y'all y'all can't quite he ain't quite on camera. Wait a minute. See? See? Y'all can't quite see. And my man has on orange too. He has on orange. You got twisted. Talk about that Morgan Bear. Uh, nah, we can't see that. All I see is the shirt right now. T T sit down. Troy, the orange ain't important. The black is what's important. Wait a minute, let me let me. 
The black is what's shit. important. The black is important. The black is what's important. Oh, wait a minute. So, so much animus today. What's going on, Devon? Oh, she didn't use the government name. That's the queen asking about you and the gangster assassin. What's up, wait a minute? Let me, wait a minute. Let me you got you got special effects over there? What we what we need to for for Yale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, is that what we do? Yeah. Ah, right, Yale, you now on the network. Hey, you can't say this is the right here. And people can see you. They didn't say anything virtually. Yo, we got special guests in the house. Yale, but he's representing. I'm still calling it Baltimore Orange, but that's Morehouse. I'm not Morehouse. I'm sorry. Morgan. Morgan. What is it? What is this Howard Bison Cup doing on this? <laughs> hey, shh. What is this Howard Bison Bruh. Cool Mug doing in Baltimore? Oh, it's the non-brisket happening, man. Look, see, you, don't even, you don't need to talk about this. See? You don't, don't even talk about this. Let me, let me That's not you. even supposed to. Let me tell you something. <laughs> First of all, I've been listening to the show. Okay. Okay. I got, I got a question. I want to get this out the way first. So I got a question. Isn't the young man on trial, isn't he like 37 years old? 27. 27. Yes. Okay. All right. What, what are your thoughts on it? Do you, do you know anything about it? I, I, I remember hearing about it when it happened, and I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, the one thing I want to say is to everybody, it, and I know this is hard for a lot of people. If you're in a situation where you got to be throwing your woman out of the house or fighting with your woman, or if you're a woman, you got to be in a situation where you got to be fighting your man, no matter what the situation is, maybe it's time not to be in that situation. I agree. Yes, right? sir. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, we all have come, as I heard you say, we've all, like our sisters, whatever, we've all come to the defense of females in our family for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But when you're in an abusive situation, whether you're being abused or you're the abuser, if you've got to be getting physical with somebody in a violent way, maybe that's not the situation you need to be in. That's just my thought. That's just my thought. I mean, we we talked uh, the other week about Jim Brown. Yes. And Jim Brown was a great man for what he did on the field mm -hmm. and his civil rights record. Mm -hmm. But Jim Brown did throw a woman off a balcony at one point. Jim Brown was abusive to women mm -hmm. a lot. Jim Brown was also a man's man. Jim Brown would fight like a tank if he had to. But if you're in a situation... <laughs> where love is supposed to be the is, is supposed to be the outcome, you got to get physical. That's not the situation you need to be in, man. I'm sorry. I just I feel bad. It's it, it, I hope the, the the court system looks at the whole thing, um, from them coming to his house and him defending his brother. But for real though, it would have taken a whole lot less trouble. If someone had just dialed 911, if the woman had dialed 911, my man put his hands on me. That the police, I mean, I know like you're in Florida, so you never know where the outcome's gonna be. Mm -hmm. But it just, it just it, it, it saddens me to see people today just trying to solve situations when there are other alternatives available. Why isn't it an open shot case, especially based on the video footage? It may be an open and shut case, but they're gonna do the case. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this ain't Trayvon Martin and and George Zimmerman, where the police just walk him into the into the police station and say, OK, we're going to let you go. Right. We know there has to be a trial. Right. How that trial turns out, we don't know. It depends on how much money he's got for lawyers. And and, and you know, how much publicity it gets overall. But. If you come to my house with intent and, and, and guns, I will defend myself, but. As has happened to me in the last 20 years, I called the police first. I called 911 first and let them know that I felt threatened in my home. I was going to defend myself in my home. So when they showed up, you know, they they handled it. But I was prepared to, you know, be judged by 12. I feel that. Now, do you remember him um, as a wide receiver in the NFL? No. 
No. He okay. wasn't um, a player that um, had enough notoriety to, to rise to, I mean, not that I only look at superstars, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't hit my, he didn't hit my radar. Lamar spoke out on him. And I guess with Lamar being a Florida boy, he's familiar with it. Um, Lamar really said that he hopes that everything goes right um, for this young man and it don't go left. Um, and he's, he's standing with him, you know? So I thought that that was been news late this afternoon for Lamar to even make that statement. Yeah. And I hope Lamar continues to use his platform that he has now to to say things that are relevant and um, smart and and thought out because we know there are people who have the same platforms and say some stupid stuff a la uh, uh, wasn't Bell what was the kid's name that played running back for for Pittsburgh uh, who Ray Lewis broke his shoulder when he tackled him oh uh, it wasn't Rashad Mendenhall Oh, it wasn't men at all. I thought it was men at all. Anyway, this young man, you know, in 2012 said, you know, murdering Osama bin Laden was wrong. America shouldn't have done it. And that pretty much ended his career. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> where do you go from there? Well, let, look, let me say something real quick. Of, of things that were that we say is a question that's popped up on my uh <laughs> a question that's queen of years. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. dry snitching or nothing, but yes, Queen of Years. He purposely moved it so you couldn't see it on camera. <laughs> look, look, you know, Cameron is like, what's this hollow cup doing here? My reaction was was like uh uh, shh. Pineapple's <laughs> mobile. That's a safe hurt. Is that the Queen's Cup? No. Yes. Troy, I need you to get you in trouble. The, the thing is, she asked twice. <laughs> I ain't snitching out on the Queen, you but. You can't snitch it. You can't snitch it. You moved the Queen from the left so you can't see it. I, I, I can't be queen. If you go to the Rock Nation page, the camera gets it. <laughs> Full and direct. Um, it's trying to it, but if you if you go to the Rock Nation page, you'll see it. She told, look. She I, said, hold it up, Troy. It's, it says Big Gulp. That is not your cup. It doesn't say Big, Big Gulp. Gulp. It's a Dyson. <laughs> Wrong B word. The, 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 Troy went to St. Joe. He doesn't understand. Uh -huh. He can't spell. Right. It looks like big gulp to him. It says it's got a big. It's got a B on it. It's seven eleven. Look. Oh Lord. So so. She was, which one is it, Troy? It's right. Like, you know, like the Yeti that keeps stuff cold and hot. So what you tell me is your wife won't let you use her cup. And the thing is, she got so much Howard shit in it. She don't know what's what. She didn't never know. She know that cup then. <sighs> I feel like she probably has a lot of Howard stuff because they be giving that stuff away. Oh, he talking. He look, he's because they can sell it. That's right. Get me off. Get me off the hook. She only knows she, she went into the kitchen trying to figure out which one. I showed you, and I look. I grabbed the one that wasn't even because there's one that she saw before you held it up. Oh, oh. she went to the Rock Mag Nation page. You know, what? can't show everything. You can go to hell, right? <laughs> you go to look, look. Oh. No. Yeah, yeah, just talk about that. Yeah, yeah first, and then we will go over the schedule. Yeah, because you know what? I'm tired of sick of you. What? And I'm sick of you. you going, did you turn to the game? No, I did not. But you all have me paying attention to the Orioles. And every time I pay attention, something go wrong. Something go south. I mean. It's your fault. For years. Don't mm -hmm. watch no more than years. To the game. Just I'm looking at the, at, the, at the scores. I'm paying attention when Baltimore rolls up on Sports Center. Like, hey. Last Tuesday, they were. That's what Rock. We were just talking about that. They were. They were up. Here's the funny part. They were up four to nothing. Yes. Then they gradually came back and they ended up losing. By the time we got home, they lost the game. But the next day, the Yankees was up four to nothing and lost. So the final game, Orioles were up three to nothing. And I'm sitting there, please don't score another run. Don't score two. Don't get four to nothing. They end up winning three to one. I take it. Uh. Okay, we're good now. Just I'm take care so of my cup. Proud. Tell that damn bear to hush I up. I went to Morgan State. She said, I'm tell that so damn bear proud. to hush up. Now I'm brisket I'm having ass. 
Golden State. <laughs> Glory. I Hallelujah. I see. Are you following? You pulling in? I am. That must be how uh, you responded so quick. You must see it. I right, got you. All right. I mean, so y'all got a vice president. Okay. And maybe a couple celebrities. We got celebrities, too. We got people who went to Morgan who were famous. Oh, don't get us started on that. You know. Don't get us started. You know, to what, what came out of Howard. Listen. I know this much. Morgan ain't never made a Biggie rap song. I know this much. She ain't living in D.C. She living in home she got, she's living in the home of the Bears. That's all I'm saying. Because mm, mm, mm. it's cheaper. What you, why are you keeping for it? Well, I should tell you. She made a wise decision. You know, I'm going home taking my bag. No, no, she cool. You, you, you know, I, I don't know what he's doing. I think you need to at least stay on this side with the bag and don't go on that side. Because cause I'm with you. I'm with you. Man. You know the bag was well, Yes, I did. I, I let the bag cut out the bag. It's nobody like snitching. Nah, it ain't nobody snitching. But I'm gonna say this: anytime Yale asks four different times, "Is there a show? Are y'all gonna be there? Don't disappoint me. Don't let me down." I knew you was coming, and I knew you weren't coming in behind me. First of all, wait a minute. Queen has said something about uh, being in Baltimore to class up the joint. Now, now you're trying to diss. You know, stay with, stay with the, with the Morgan. Howard thing. Do not go into the um to the Baltimore DQ page. Oh, and look, look, the air just kicked in. It just so kicked in. My man, my man, my man. Look, we doing good over here. Welcome. I told, I told, I told you to go out there. You ain't even listening to me. Not ice cold as a ginger ale. Not ice cold. She say she said what she said. Wait a minute. Told you to block Nicole. You don't want to listen. No. In fact, while while she's there, let me give her some beautiful scenes of of uh, Baltimore real quick. While look. So she said, please make sure that what's in the bag, nobody takes my shit. She don't have her shit. Is that, is that Lucas saying that? Yeah, that's not that's saying that's it. It. Yeah, she, she don't have her shit. Luca Rossi told me to make sure that her portion was safe. And I told her I can't guarantee nothing. I'm just delivering now. This is only for people that got to welcome to Birdland press badges. If you don't have a welcome to Birdland press badge, you can't even come in the studio. You know, there was a reason why the Barzini family was afraid of Luca Brasi. I'm just trying to tell you. I ain't saying it. Was Sharon Adams. Sharon. Who is that? I don't know how I introducing herself. Sharon, I know who you are. What's up, oh. Sharon? Okay, so you know she is. Yeah, of course. You know, we get all these added viewers on the night that Yale come in with a surprise. <laughs> because I was given orders to, to promote the page. And that's right. And, and I did. I promoted the page three different spots. I appreciate you, bro. And some end up following me. Oh, I, and by the way, shout out to Joey Teague. Is that somebody you know? Tony Teague, I don't know. He's, He's in Florida. Played in the NFL. No, 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 no. No, he definitely ain't in the NFL. And that, unless he played a long time ago. Long time ago. Well, shit. I don't know if that's him. Joey Teague, he's in Sanford, Florida. He, he followed us today. So I don't know him, but... Oh no, that he ended up liking the the Uncle Grandpa video, which was fire. You, you did you, that was that's fire. pretty cool. That was fire. And which which one did you see? Did you see one where Rock was dancing to? Dancing outside the studio. Oh, we saw that one. Yeah. That was a good one. That was a quick one. The one where Rock was out front. Did I share that? Before I went live with it, I'm gonna have to repost that. Where Rock was uh we gotta work on you know the song Flashlight, Paul and Funkadella. Of course. You know who Sir Knows is. The Void of Funk. That's how man sir knows. So it's like, so that part when you break down, most of all, you know, yes. funk, help him find the funk. Yes. That's what we gotta do. We gotta put the bop gun on Rosh so he can find the funk. That's all I'm saying. But he also never <laughs> learned to swim. He can't comprehend all the strokes. That's right. Get out there with that seafood. Anyway, look, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna give y'all some uh I'm gonna give y'all some quick Oreo day. You got some stuff you gotta do. To yeah, I ain't going game. nowhere. He's, oh, he's, he's searching around. I'm here for I'm here for this Orioles mess. I'm all here. right, and I will say Aaron Judge hit two home runs last. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna have to have a discussion with you about Aaron Judge in in a minute because there's there's a problem. I'm, I'm gonna explain to you something you said last year that really pissed me off. <laughs> and you do you know what I'm talking about already about Aaron Judge? Yes. All right. Be, be fine. Be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna say that shit out loud again? We look, we try to keep the lights on. First, let me say something about the O's real quick. All right. Before you start that, I, I got My Lord. Troy, I gotta do it, man. Listen, it, it's very it's it's very important that this get done. 
I be smoking Yale smoked meats. He specializes in briskets, ribs, turkey breast, chicken, and pulled pork. By all means, please, by all means. Yes, I did, Nicole. I brought you a soda. Pork belly. Pork belly. Yeah. And some contact info. So, uh, I be smoking barbecue. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on IG. You can you can uh, text me. All my information is there under those uh, platforms. Uh, and you can find me on my page, yeah. Yale Beverly. I'm telling you right now, I am the only Yale Beverly on Facebook. That's legit. There are some, there's a couple clones out there that tried to be me, but they ain't me. But you'll know me when you see me because I'm me. You I'm about to, me, I can be. You about to make me create something. And, that I and I mean, G um, delivers. So everybody place your order with Yale, cash app him, and give him your address. Then call the station and tell me what you ordered, and I will pick it up for you. And then take it home and eat it. <laughs> you ain't supposed to say that part, Yale. I will not be held responsible. <laughs> I will pick it. <laughs> just, just call the station and tell me what you ordered, and I'll be glad to go pick it up for you. Better be make, waiting for him at the station when yeah, you show up. Make sure the, the bag is stable. <laughs> you better put it in a drop box. Oh, uh, you said you did bring her soda? I, that's all he brought her. <laughs> that's all he brought her was a soda. Nicole, I was sure you were going to be here today. Uh huh. I thought. You know, this, this is the only reason I came today was because I thought you would be here. And I'm, yeah, thank you to it. Don't worry. I'm yeah. trying to to offer a olive branch. Mm-hmm. Um, That's what I said. I told him I would take it to her. She heard you. Mm-hmm. I, I would take it to her, yeah. But, uh, Nicole, you hear that he said it. Mm-hmm. Right? I will take it to you, her. Okay. Mm-hmm. We can give her a choice part. Mm-hmm. You, you can try that. Gangsta, I got you though. I got you. Uh, let me give you my Oreos, man, because I, 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 Gail, I, I, I'm so glad you're here. This will help you understand the, help the, you the, help the you. blasphemous comment that you made by the end judge. All right. Oreos, right now, we're in second place. Yes, yeah, second uh, best record in baseball. Right, behind the Devil Ray. Are they known as the Devil Rays in North Carolina? Yeah. I think it's, I'm sorry. You're right. It is the Rays now. Is- Tampa Bay Rays. Yes. You're right about that. So and I don't even follow the sport. Yeah, you're right. I keep saying the Devil Rays and D Rays, and they keep look. It was Devil Rays, and it was D Rays, even though that's still the Devil. You're right. And then it's like Mickey saying Mickey D's is like I just gotta okay. Every now and then I say McDonald's, even though it's McDonald's. Anyway, so they're in second place, and uh, they're playing against the Guardians. They lost yesterday. They got shut out. They got. Molly Watt. We had it wasn't that was not Molly Watt, man. We had and we had a serious injury. It scared me. Huh? I saw the yeah, I, was I was watching when that happened. And it would have it would have been a base hit. He was he was running out of uh well, well clearly because it was still close, even though he stopped yeah, running. Because the because the throw was off base. Yeah. Well, no, it was he was that fast. Yeah, it was well, you, you see the play, the first base was pulled off the, almost pulled off the oh, that's true. By a toe. That's true. But here, let me see. I got a, I got a little thing. Uh, ended up being a groin. It looked like a quad. It looked like a quad to me. I thought he pulled his yeah. quad. So groin is better than a quad. Is it better? I believe so. I mean, you know, the shoulder tournament ain't good. But yeah, so it, so it can be because they did put him on a tendon. I I popped my quad once, mm-hmm. and although I'm not playing on that level, my dumb ass kept showing up anyway because we was trying not to forfeit. I just didn't run hard. Uh-huh. But I could like I could swing the bat, but I just it was like, please hit it far enough just so I can get the first. Right. And then whoever's up, please don't swing at the first pitch. Give me a second. <laughs> so you can go. <laughs> but uh yeah, that was when I did mine, um, it was weird because I didn't like I felt it. Then I didn't, you know what I mean? Then you yeah. didn't. But then when you go to do it, it's just like a hamstring. Yeah. Hamstring, but a hamstring, I think you can walk better um, oh. than you can. I think the quad, I think I could, like my hamstring, as long as I just walked. Mm-hmm. I don't mean when it first happened. But like when you when you get up and then it's like, I can walk. But if I go to do anything strenuous, at least that's the way it was for me. Like I couldn't, I couldn't bowl. 
Like yeah. if it was right handed, it was it was my right leg. So if I was a right handed bowler, I could have bowled. Right. But it was when you go to extend that that leg out, yeah. and I didn't know that because I was walking. I was like, oh, I should be able to bowl. But that was your quad. Yes. Yeah. No. No. That was my hamstring. So so you pulled your hammy at the bottom or at the top? At the top. See, for me, when I sprained my hammy, I couldn't sit on the toilet. I'm gonna keep it real. I so bending, toilet. bending your sitting on the toilet, hoit. Because it was right on where it was. It, it's right on that hammy. That was a problem. Sitting on a chair was a problem. I didn't experience that. Yeah, I, it was bad. It was bad. Well, that's a bad that Driving was a problem because I, I couldn't do anything comfortably where I sat down. Mm-mm. So, you, so, so Mullins. Right. So, Mullins. 10 day DL. So, the 10 day DL, the Orioles ended up getting. Uh, Oh, I can't think of the dude's name. Who who got released by the Aaron Hicks? Thank God I brought it. He used to play for the Yankees. The Yankees just cut. Is that the kid that almost made the squad out of spring training and was the last cut? And the Yankees picked him up and he had a home run against us in the series. No, no, no. He the Yankees ended up cutting cutting him because he was he was on the, already on the Yankees, and they cut him. Uh, let me see, not that long ago. This is something that you're talking about that I don't recall because I had to, I had to figure out who I had to go do. Going out of Florida, there was a kid that the Orioles. He was the last cut of the Orioles, and the Yankees picked him up, and he had a hit against us when the Yankees came here at the beginning of the season. I don't know if that was his name. It sounds familiar. We said Hicks. It sounded familiar. Let's see. And the Orioles picked him up because he was the last cut. I, I'm okay with that. Hey, yeah. Hey. Oh Lord. One of our faithful listeners um has a question. He said, Do all your stories have to involve the bathroom? <laughs> I got some stories that involve the bedroom. I don't know if he wants to know them either. <laughs> <laughs> it says here, Hicks was recently let go by the Yankees after after a string of disappointing years. Oh. The team had signed him to a seven year, Ooh. seventy million dollar contract. Before 2020, and will have to eat significant money as a result of the designation. The Orioles are only on the hook for the major league minimum. Okay, I like that. I like that. Kind of can he hit though? I mean, defensively, I think we were cool, but um, is he going to hit at the top of the or where's where's he going to hit? I don't know, but he's 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 is he playing today? I think he think he's active. I think they activated him today. Somebody like that, wouldn't you wouldn't you be better? Wouldn't it make your lineup stronger to put him in the bottom of your lineup? If he's batting badly. I mean and put him in a what, the fourth slot? No, no, nah, nah, you wouldn't want him fourth, but I don't know. I six. I don't know. I, think five, like, I don't six. know if he's fast. I'm I'm thinking five, six, um, or even seven, eight. Yes, maybe seven, eight. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know enough about him. Clearly, I had the wrong person. Um, but you know, your boy, the catcher, needs to pick this game up. Raul, 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 Raul. Oh Ralph. man, he catches killing, man. He killing. He killing. He still got to pick it up a little bit. He got. He, he went in a slump. What in the slump? That's Mateo. Mateo was more in a slump. Schmidt was in a slump for like six games. Don't be jinxing. No, no. I'm just saying they were winning. And I was like, oh, they were winning. This kid's in a slump. Oh, don't. Well, as long as they win, it's still show up all the attention. And now look at them. No, no, no. They lost. They lost yesterday. They did win Sunday, but they lost a series. They lost a series. Yeah. The, is that the first series they lost all year? Might be the second. No, it's, a, it's definitely at least the second because they lost one to the Yankees. Oh, yeah. Okay. But they beat the, so that was the second time they played the Yankees and they won the second. But early in the season they lost the. But they have they've only lost three in a row, maybe twice. Uh, what's Wink saying? Yale is just used to his stories revolving around the glory, the glory holes in the bathroom. Oh, did you did you see that and just act like you didn't see it? <laughs> did not see that. Oh, so I, I did not. Oh, because the one you said she's too young for this conversation. But uh, my feed here. Check my feed. slighted of the fact that every Tuesday you come on and you have three or four fans. However, your wife do not support the show because she'd rather be a trivia. Well, she's supporting right now. She she had because she didn't go to trivia tonight. But she, she's supporting you by default. No, she she remember she'll throw trivia questions. Uh uh-uh, uh, I, I, I. <laughs> because she needed to phone a friend. She needed to have some help answer. Mm-hmm. 
I got nothing negative saying home. Look, in fact, I'm put you, let me put your little memes up there, girl. There you go. Jamaica flag, Biggie, Brooklyn Bridge, Howard. Look, White Castle, even through your White Castle in there. Nah, I'm good. Nah, I know what it is now. <laughs> her Spidey sense told her that Yale was coming and she thought it was risky to Look, she that. already saying, Rock Don't Star. You already know he's trying to get attention. <laughs> nope, I'm finished. So I'm finished. Am I to take from this that Awanya doesn't like my ribs? Nah, she just, Awanya I don't like nothing prefer, but your brisket. She prefers the brisket. Because I know I've sent ribs home with you before. She's never gotten them. Phil! Oh, shit, Phil. Man. Phil, do you see who's sitting here? I can't, you know. I got a message for you. Phil's calling the Bengals. We're going to go We're gonna go over that in a minute, Phil. In fact, we need to we play them week three. But while we wait for Phil to call it, because Phil, I know, is an Orioles fan. Let me just say real quick. Yeah, he did. <laughs> We got uh, so we lost the first game. We can still win the series against the Guardians tonight and tomorrow, and then we got the day off Thursday. Then they go off to San Francisco, not the 49ers. They're playing the Giants, and they're playing the Brewers after that. So they got a they got a road trip where they're going to be away for a little while. They're off Thursday and Monday. All right, let's say this real quick, man. This is going to help you, Yale, understand as we lead into this whole Aaron Judge thing you was talking about, man. Uh. Phil says he's not calling while that guy is there. Okay, Phil. Just get your tutu ready, man. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. When is this date I'm supposed to see this man in his tutu? Uh, officially, according to King Brody, King Brody said we can't do it until after Lamar throws his first pass as a Raven. Yeah. This is some bullshiggity. He got, he got, he got, even all of a sudden, they're going to trade They're gonna trade Lamar? Uh, I mean, technically, just, just to call, I think that all he has to do, even if he throws, technically, he's so, showing up for OTAs. Yeah, he's throwing a pass. Eh, that doesn't count. If we get a preseason pass, that still works. I don't understand where this came in because I was I was prepared. Right, he was. He was prepared. But he said he still do it, but he's like, hey, no, Phil says we need to set that up. Come with it because I, oh, Lamar also has a no trade clause in his contract. That's true, too. So he ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. For three years, I'm not worried, and then they'll, they'll give him some more money because yeah, by money. then we'll have at least one Super Bowl. At least one. It. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that, Phil. You need to come on down here, Phil. All right, let me get Phil it. talking that nonsense. Talk, they're going to tell nah, you. Nah, they don't even bring it in the air. Nah. Like, we're going to let him in the building. Now, we're going to block somebody. Phil, I need you to come up in here, too, man, before we need to talk about um, the cold schedule. And I want to know what your prediction is, but I'd rather you come in and do it. Um, look, Phil, Phil trying to really jinx up, jinx up the crowd. You know, I ain't even reading it. I ain't even going to say something. Nah, nah. You will roll back on you. They'll boomerang on you. It'll boomerang on you. We're going we're gonna to do some Raven stuff. All right, let me. Do the Colts even have a quarterback yet? Yeah, they they they, they draft the kids. Remember, they was terrible. They had a high draft pick, and that, and that's and I said they'll stop him though. Probably not, not beginning the season, because he needs some time. But he needs he needs to learn the NFL and get some work. You know, some years under his belt. But that's fine. He'll be fine in a few years. Phil say Colts will be eight and nine, but that's a championship in their division. That is, and that's won't. a championship in their division. They Jacksonville has come back, and uh, Bob is on it. Bob said there are no Colts after 1983. And he says Minshew will start. Minshew will start. That's what you're thinking. Minshew should start. You all right, Phil. We're good. Can we put Phil in a Ravens jersey and a tutu? I don't see why not. I don't really think we should give him a and, new jersey and a tutu because that's what it's all about. And and I think he needs a, a number 11, a size 11 Adidas to put in his mouth where his foot, because <laughs> he put his foot in his mouth talking all that yang. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm all for, you know. But Troy, we have hijacked. Come on, man. Talk oh, she give him a big sign. I got the a sign should, rock downs. Go ahead. The sign should say, <laughs> in Lamar we trust. Again, I'm trying to see if no, he popped up. I got no problem with it. Every every post that we can find with Lamar, we want yes. everybody hold it. Hold it up. And it's just a in Lamar we trust. And we're gonna make him do the park high strut in the T team. <laughs> that sound that sound good. Oh, yeah. Sounds good to me. Yes. That that picture I bought from the uh Let's raise some money. Oh, you about raise it. See, Phil, Phil, Phil gonna do it. We just yes. gotta we just gotta get a date down. 
We got a whole bunch of uh and, bunch and of WWE is gonna there. broadcast live that day. Definitely. Definitely. All right, hold on. All right, I gotta give you something to explain something. All right. What you don't like, but you may not have as much of a problem with MLB power rankings. All right. I did I right. I need to give and I actually tend to agree with, with this one. Um Dude, sneaking out while the camera on him and they can just see him walking out. All right, let me look. Now I got the slide. Let's go to. Uh, let me just take him out of the air. In fact, I should just cut the camera off altogether. We're going to go to one or three. All right, anyway. See there? Because normally I try to gradually do it so nobody knows I'm actually doing it. But anyway. All right, here go the Power Rangers, right? Number one, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay Rays. Uh -huh. Number two, Rangers. And I don't have a problem with it because we just lost to them. Okay, we just okay. lost it, and they're they're hotter than us for the moment. So, I, so I'm when I hear power rankings, I'm thinking for that moment in time. Right, it's not for the whole season. Right. So I can go with that. Number three is Baltimore. Number four, the Braves. Number five, the Dodgers. Number six, the Astros. Number seven, the Yankees. Number eight, D backs. Uh, number nine, Red Sox. Number ten, the Mariners. Now I went to top twelve to make a point. Eleven is the Twins. Twelve, the Blue Jays. Now I got this one from uh, uh, Major League MLB.com. Uh -huh. I was going to use Bleacher Report, but it, I think it was a little more shaded for for our division. It seemed like. Okay. Although I I I I really agree with it, but it really it, I'm like you know what? Let me just is that is that a Baltimore company? I have no idea. Because I, I know Russell Street Report is. I don't know where Bleacher Report is. Okay. Because it's going to report, maybe they report on everybody, but I always see a lot of well, our stuff. You're probably getting a fee because you're Baltimore centric. Mm -hmm. So probably you're getting more Baltimore stuff. Right. I mean, from Bleacher. I mean, maybe yeah. they do yeah. other stuff. Yeah, they do. But uh, you probably, since you're Baltimore centric, you're the Orioles and you're the Colt. I mean, the, the Ravens and, and Purple. King. So all that, they probably, they probably, the algorithms, algorithms sending them all right. to me. Right. All right. Well, the thing about this ranking, the, the, what I noticed now, the, the I'll, I'll compare Bleach Report because I crossed it up. Of the top twelve teams, man, our division, all five teams in the top twelve. Bleach Report had all five of them in the top ten. Uh, okay, Phil, you want to come in the week? Okay, you'll wait till that week. I would love to have you come in. So you got to come in with all your gear on for the Colts and Ravens. You might want to come in if you can. That's week three. So we'll talk about it. But I do want to go over your schedule, man, um, before the season starts, the cold schedule. Um, but anyway, so I'm, what I'm saying is our division, we have the only division where everybody's over 500. Every last place team over 500 in the ALE. So we, we, got a, we got a hard division. And the hottest team right now, unfortunately, is the Yankees. They're still behind us, but only, I think, about two games. Yeah, unless I saw they were, we were at 39 wins, they had 37, we had 37, they had 35. Right. I think the, the key is they have more losses. I think, I think they play more games. We must have some rainouts or something. But um, but they're a couple games behind us. But um, um, so, with, so with that being said, the, first of all, the – NL Central and American League Central, I mean, they got teams in first place. Now, they they did list the Twins on MLB. They did have the Twins at number 11. So they're not even in the top 10. And they're in first place in their division. The um, the Brewers aren't listed anywhere. They're in first place in their division. So I'm, the, the point is, our division, man, is so strong. It's, it's, it's a hard division. And for the, for the Orioles to be... You know, picture last place. And, and something just came up in my timeline that last year we were in, we were one game. Oh, I shouldn't say that. We were one game because somebody tagged me. I just happened to say it. We were one game out of first place, yet we were in third place. <laughs> there was, I forget, the Yankees were in first place. Maybe it was boss. I'm not sure what it was. But we have we had less wins than we do now. We had 20-something. Win. So everybody was beating up on everybody. Okay. So we we'll, we'll, we'll be 34 wins, I think, now. So we're, we're over 30. Yeah, I know. I, know I that. think it's 38, 30, 37, 39 is what I saw. Right? Okay. So we had less wins, but, um, and then somebody tagged me and it was, and it was the, you know, I couldn't verify the date. All I know is our division is tough now, man. With these Yankees, bro, if you're going to be an Orioles fan, don't give a damn about no record being set by the Yankees. You don't, it, it, having, having, I, I, I'm going to give you the perfect example. Wanting to see Aaron Judge 
Cause you, cause I get it. The sports side of you is like, I want to see a record set or whatever. That would be like saying, I want to see Ben Roethlisberger throw sixty touchdowns. That's that's that's. Would you, you know? It's like I don't. The sports side of you would be like, would you be sitting there saying, I want to see history made. I want to see no. You know, damn well, that was painful just just for me to say it out loud, wasn't it? Would you want to see that? I wait. <clears throat> Take your time. Wait a minute. Do I have a? Do I have a? Wait a I must have a sound effect in here. Wait a minute. Don't. You 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 got it. So, <sighs> would you want to see that? So it's different. I'm gonna I'm make it a habit. Calling me that thing. Uh, let, let, let me explain why I see it differently. You would you want to see that? No, but I hate Ben Roethlisberger. But the reckless, the, the reckless raper, reckless biker. Right. I hate, I hate. But would you want to see any? Okay, anybody from Pittsburgh? Do you want to see them set any NFL record for something positive? Losses, yeah. Sacks, getting beat up, losing, going zero and seventeen. I'm sure you want to see that, right? Yeah. But I'm, I'm like, I gotta keep it real. I gotta be real. I gotta be real about it. Um. Pittsburgh had a quarterback by the name of Joe Gilliam. Smith. No, 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 no. We not we not going back. We not going back. We are not going back, bro. Joe Gilliam had a strong arm. No. no. What year was this? This was in the 70s. So we're not playing then. We're no regular. Let me finish. You see my oh. point when I get there. Oh no. The the, the Steelers sat Joe Gilliam so that. So that Terry Bradshaw could play. I have hated the Steelers because of that. Mm -hmm. Joe Gilliam was a black quarterback from HBCU. Mm -hmm. And he got pushed to the side by Terry Bradshaw. Joe Gilliam ended up having a drug problem and died. And basically penniless. It's a shame. But then the Steelers had a guy named Greg Lloyd who played um, who played defensive line. And they had... Uh, a uh, guy named Kirkland who played linebacker. These guys were bad news, and I was a Raider fan back then, and they and I, I was impressed with them even even then. But those are the only Steelers I like. Now, if you say the Redskins and the Joe Theismann, I get it, but Aaron Judge, I was rooting for him because everybody was rooting against him. That's the only reason. I don't care who he played for; they were rooting against him because just like when Hank Aaron was coming after Babe Ruth's record. They were coming after Hank Aaron saying, now I don't want him to do it. And they didn't want Aaron Judge to break Roger Maris's record. And you know why. And that's why I was rooting for, for Aaron Judge. I would, wouldn't have cared if he hit 70 home runs as long as he didn't hit any against Baltimore. But, but it's just it's just it's just what it is. It's just what it is. That's that's why I was rooting for Aaron Judge. And 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 you know, I'm happy he got his bag. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. And the Orioles would just spend money and do get a guy like that. Why can't they spend money and get Shohei Otani? Do that for me. Do that for me. I need y'all to understand that the views and opinions expressed from this <laughs> guy right here. I need y'all to understand something. This this does not work. This, <laughs> this does not work. I I am t I am upset with you right now. And uh uh Phil, if you if you're calling in to agree with this. I don't know if I want Phil calling in now. I'm I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Nah. <laughs> I can care. If, if Aaron Judge had 100 home runs and the Orioles still won the game, I'm happy. He get 100 home runs against us. We went 101 to 100. I'm happy. As long as the home team wins, I'm happy. No, no. <laughs> no. You have upset me, man. You have upset me. We, we. Oh, wait, let me keep looking. Let me keep the volume down. Listen, no, no, man. It's we got to call. Is it the man? Phil don't want to call in because he knows Shelly's got fast. Got that speed dial. <laughs> you, you there, Phil? I, I hear that. No, I'm calling in because a, I'm a man of my word. 
and appreciated like it's not going to be. And I said Lamar has to take one snap as a Raven in an NFL game. That's why I said we three would be perfect because he could tear his ACL and not play. So he could have played his last game as a Raven. That you was know, the you, you know. You know, Carmen. You want to go back to that Otani thing? What was Yale saying about the Orioles not signing somebody like Otani? They don't. It's not about don't. It's a lot of things that come into play with that too, Yale. When you look at people like Otani, they're going to play in markets where there's huge Asian appeals as well. So that's why a team like the Angels, was sponsored by the Disney Corporation can bring somebody in like that. It's other it's revenue. The Angels absolutely stink. And then they have the two best players in baseball. Mm-hmm. They don't care about winning. They have nothing else around them. So somebody like Otani, the Orioles shouldn't have him even on their radar. The Orioles gotta make a big decision because what's gonna end up happening is some that don't know the area or don't know the team are gonna be mad when they trade away one of these young pieces and then you get a veteran on. And that's all the Orioles need right now. And you got to look at their triple-A record. I don't want to get too deep to show y'all, but the Orioles are fine. They're going to trade away somebody young to get a strong arm. But in regards to bringing in free agents, why not pay the homegrown talent? Why do we have to go outside to make them and, and that's a good question that I wanted to know, because they brought in this guy from the Yankees that, that Troy is talking about, and all I've been hearing all year is how strong the Orioles' farm system is, like it was back in the day. Like back in the day, the Who's Yankees strong? were buying talent, and the Orioles were just bringing people up through the system. And 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 we were we were hanging with them and beating them on a regular basis. And they got away from that. I think they got away from that. Before Angelos took over or right after Angelos took over? No, I'm saying I I don't remember exactly, but I think it was either before or after Angelos took over. And, you know, then Major League Baseball just really became not about the farm system at all. Just buy everybody's buying free agents from all other teams. So but now the Warriors got the strong farm system, minor league system. And they go sign somebody from outside that failed miserably with the Yankees. So I don't understand that. But that's baseball. I don't. I don't come in no baseball. You know, the, the, the pick up that player that that was just insurance on Cedric Mullins. The Orioles have a good outfield, but if Austin Hayes is playing so well and left, why move him to center? He can play center field, but why not? Hayes is going to probably be out two to three weeks. Only, hopefully. You mean but that move is one of those moves. He was DSA, he cleared it. That's actually an Oreo move. It doesn't cost them anything to kick the wheels on that tire if you're looking for somebody for a month. Right now in Hakers in Hakers Town, in Bowie and Aberdeen, they Norfolk. Norfolk is blowing everybody away like the <laughs> Dallas Carter in Friday Night Lights. They are chomping at the fence. That's why they sent Grayson Rodriguez down. The Orioles are on a good pace. The only thing this town got to realize is the Orioles could finish in fourth place in the American League and still not make the playoff and still have a winning record. And that's the key to this town. It's still trust the process. And the process is going really good. But I don't think they should bring in a big top three. What class did you bring in an arm? Do you remember what we finished last year? Again? Do you remember? Did we finish in third last year? Last year, the Orioles finished in third place. It was, did they finish in third or fourth? I know it one was game, one, one game. Because it was, was Tampa. It was Tampa. The Orioles finished, I believe, in third. It was Tampa. I know we hit a Boston. The Blue Jays? Tampa, Boston. What did the Yankees do last year? I'm trying to think. Yankees got in. They got in. The Orioles were ended until the first or second week of September. They were in the wild card race. And okay. then that's when the youth caught up with them. But okay. right now, um, um, Mateo is struggling. Um. Mm. But they are loaded in the middle. Three middle infielders ready to come up 
So um, they're going to have to make some tough decisions, but I just don't think the fan base is used to this much talent needing to come play in the big leagues. Um, my concern is they haven't extended high yet, and at this point, he he lost with nothing. He won with a little something, and now he's got players, and they're playing well, and I just don't understand why they haven't extended him. Yeah, so the Orioles go on. They win the World Series. Now you got to bid against other teams wanting the best manager or the hottest manager in baseball. So I'm not feeling the Orioles a little bit right now. It's like a Raven-like move, so they did kind of disappoint me. Question. I'm hoping y'all can um, help me out. Why is it more of the manager that's putting the Orioles in the position at the end, or is it the talent that the Orioles now have that's putting them in that position? What I'm gonna say is um, it's about for me. It's about the managers and egos. So what most people might not remember is when Buck Showalter first came to the Orioles. They were in the rebuilding process with him. Mm -hmm. And the Orioles in 2012 made the wild card. And there was a little tension from Adam Jones because Buck Walter was getting so much of the credit. When Adam Jones was like, we're the guys going out there doing the work. So you had to have that manager that put players in the position to win. So it's a fine line. Brandon Hyde was part of the rebuild. Most people, most coaches, when they're part of the rebuild, are gone. They don't last. You can't just keep losing 100 games, 100 games, 100 games. Right. He's probably one of the few that it got to the fifth year of a contract with a total blow-up, like the Orioles did. So the fans in, in most of the Orioles' houses were, if the Orioles got better, they were going to bring up uh, uh, Britain, who is the coach at Norfolk, who coached all of these young stars. So the word was, all right, the Orioles get off to a slow start. We can fire high mm -hmm. and legitimately bring up uh, Britain because they don't want to lose Britain in the organization. Now with the Orioles winning under Hyde, they're going to have some tough decisions to make there. But it's going to have plenty in too, so... You know, I love this show when we're not talking about the Ravens, man. We should just pull off. Yeah, because we don't have to talk about losers. But um, so, <laughs> but isn't it true? I mean, I, I, again, I don't follow baseball strong, but Buck Walter is the guy you come in to get your team ready. But he he can't finish the deal. Everywhere he's been, he yeah. does. He never finishes the deal. Twenty sixteen. He grew the Orioles by bringing in um, Juanjo Jimenez in Toronto. When anybody, even a casual fan, knows you either start Jimenez or you wait to the next time. And you had the best closer in baseball, one up ready to go. You bring in Zach Britton mm. for that one inning, and he didn't even do that. So that's when Buck lost the team because he was just stubborn and he was trying to do it his way. And he really lost the team yeah. in 2016. Yeah. Um, so the man now, too, he's just, he's a good guy. And I'm sorry, I just don't think good guys are when He doesn't curse. He does everything right in life. He's always positive, but he's just not the guy to get over the top. So, oh, excuse me. You can ask a question, yeah. I, I was, oh, I was, no. oh, I have one last thing to say, fellas, and I want to say this. I believe from the bottom of my heart Baltimore Ravens will be the team to beat in the AFC. Not the team in Kansas City, not the team in Cincinnati. Um, I, never, I, I, I talk my smack, but on paper, they're great. But even if you throw in an injury or two, they're still pretty good. So this is going to be my worst season of football because I don't see the Ravens losing more than three regular season games. And, and for me, if they don't win at all, I think this team is going to be special. I'm a little jealous, but he's still, still going to hate 
But this team is going to be. What's what I got to say about that? I think we need another corner and we need a we need another running back. Um, it doesn't matter. Right, what's it the running doesn't running matter. Back? Offense is going to be ridiculous. Oh, the and the sad crazy. thing is, I I think they get beat. I think it happens. Yeah. He's going to Cleveland. I think it happens. He's going to Cleveland. That's what upsets me. He's going to Cleveland. No, I I I think yeah. that once Lamar and OBJ we'll put up Johnny pick Lyon. up that pick up that phone, it doesn't cost the Ravens nothing. I I don't think Hopkins needs the, the, the twenty million or twenty five million deal. Mm. I think I'm gonna use Yale word. I think he comes to Baltimore to prove something and look he's looking at the next contract, not this. I think he comes to Baltimore, fellas, so, and I think the Ravens dominate the regular season. I don't like Harbaugh as a coach, so I'm not gonna go that far in the playoffs, y'all. I'm just keeping it one hundred. Uh. But this team is scary to me. He won't be the coach because the coach just owned him. But one of their three losses. Wait, 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 wait. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Ravens. Wait a minute. The Ravens. What? I'm confused. You, the Ravens will dominate, but won't be the. Like, you know, this won't be my coach. They won't be my coach. You mean like? What's gonna happen? You mean like, you don't need to worry about that. Because like, one of their three losses. I mean, I think fourteen and three is an amazing season. Like, relax, man. Wait a minute. But didn't we? Beat them on a Monday night game, come back and beat them last time. So, once again, they so cut the lights off, they started that stupid da 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 the, the rule change of the overtime. Like I said, there's a lot of things that played in the, to that game. But as long as John Harbaugh is the coach of this team, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I'm giving y'all props. I think yeah. the team is going to be Phil, we'll take you back to when the Ravens first got here and and uh, they played. Yeah. You were a Ravens fan then? Yeah, yeah. Look, that's. I'm seeing it. What are you talking about? Okay, so the Ravens, oh. the Ravens played the Colts and they had a rookie quarterback named Peyton something. And um, they were, they were, they were beating the, the Ravens. And then. The camera pan on Johnny United standing on the sideline, oh, and the joint went crazy, and they came back and beat the Colts. You remember that game? So that, I, this is what I remember about the '96. Jim so Harbaugh. Harbaugh it was the '98 Ravens. It was the '98 Ravens. The Ravens. Jim Harbaugh. The '98 Ravens. Team. I mean, you're talking about one of the four or five Hall of Famers eventually on that team, like. You're talking about a special unit there. So I, the Ravens lost me in 2003, 2004. We don't need to go into that again. But that's no. why. So I'm just trying to tell you guys. You guys are going to have a special fun. We need that corner. I we think need that corner. fans like you, the, the three of y'all in that studio, y'all deserve it. But I'm telling you now, y'all going to be fighting more on Facebook than I am because as soon as Lamar overthrows somebody, oh, that's what they, if he throws the pick six, that's what they wait everybody's going to go C, C, C. You know, open the offense more, so he's going to be at risk for more interceptions, but the, the game is going to be so good. So it pains me to say it, though. You guys are going to have a fun time this year. I actually think Lamar's... Uh, INTs are going to go down this year, even with okay. the spread. Wait a minute, I got I got a, a couple of comments. Johnny Lang, you're acting up over there. He's saying Flacco for president. He's saying Harbaugh for vice president. Soon, soon, soon as Phil made the comment about Harbaugh, Wink is talking about, well, why don't we go after Antonio Crazy Eyes Brown? The Ravens can sign him too. Or something like Little League, he's in now. And Johnny Lang says that Rock is a Dallas fan anyway. So, we uh wow yeah uh and there's a good reason to to think that that uh at least that's the second team you got a little baby feed in in you there right but uh hey, anyway. hey nothing about Dallas as far as the football team I'm a fan of Jerry Lynn and Jerry Jones Jerry Jones is the worst owner 
I'm not a fan of him as a You're a fan of Terry Jones. You probably voted for Trump twice. Terry Jones. Mm-mm. No, I, I I had to call in. I saw Yale was the one, and I was like, yeah, let's. Yeah, so what I had said, Yale, um, with me losing the bet, I think we could have more fun with it during the season. I would love to uh, pose as a trophy, and I'm going to challenge my Facebook friends to come down and take a photo. It'll cost everybody a buck, and then you guys could decide. I think we should give it to, like, a youth center or a boy center or, or treat some kids to the game. I think we could raise a couple hundred from it and have some fun. So that's, that's why let's do it the week of the Raven game. I would love to. Um, I just think we should all give back, man. Uh, but society and the Ravens do a lot for this city. And um, I've talked to a couple people. Maybe we can really have fun with it. Um, it's going to kill me to put on this purple tutu. And I heard somebody say, maybe put on a jersey, too. I'm going to be a human trophy. Um, I'll do it for the, for, for the cause. But that, that's what I was hoping we could all get together and, and raise some money for somebody. Just... You got to pick a charity, something Raven related charity. I'm willing go to go that route. Uh, I'm willing to smoke ribs and sell them, and 50 percent of the proceeds proceeds go to the same charity. Hey, hey, real quick. Um, since J- Johnny Lane's making a couple of comments, you say you're a Trumpster, Rock. <laughs> hey, Johnny, do you can you take a second and call in? Also, he's going to be opening up the poll like Johnny. Y'all, y'all down for for a visit? I'm definitely going to the poll like Johnny. Yeah, definitely say me. I'm definitely one. Of, y'all have to watch out. Hey, John, if you can call in real quick, I just posted the uh, phone number, man. Call in. We can talk about uh, Paul like Johnny's. And we got, I'm going to play this one for you guys. Great show as usual. This one yeah. online. Hey, man, and we got, we're got we trying to figure out a, to go to uh, an Oreo game, too, man. But if not, definitely. Oh, one more night. You're never going to the Oreo game with me. I'm in the club for drinks, and then I'm walking to the stadium. I told you I got my schedule then. Man, uh... <laughs> That was uncalled for. Um, I think I want to be part of the center club. I'm going I'm to sign up for the center club so that I can sit there and look at you. I, I, think, you, I think I should go with you tomorrow, Phil. I see nothing wrong I'm with sorry, that. I'm sorry, you guys are breaking up right now. I got to go. I'm sorry. Phone's breaking up. It's my phone, not you guys. You know what? Great show. Yeah, you nice going, you're going through a tunnel. Look, I'll find your work. All right, man. Have a good one. You ain't fine. Well, yeah, come on. Kevin Hart, Maryland Live, sold out. We're looking forward to it. Kevin, it's sold out. Good times up here. All right, man. All right. I'll be in touch. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot. That was Phil. By the way, you have fans too, Phil. Yeah. All right. Let me let me uh let me do a little little NFL whatnot going on. Oh, I need to get you. Oh Lord. Keep talking. He about to get all screen. Look, y'all see that? Oh shit, he done dropped everything. Keep talking, Troy. DJ Rock about to go into his typical, uh, he's in buffet mode. You're about to see what Rock does now when he's in the middle of DJ, and this is his move. So I'm going to keep the camera on Rock real quick. Don't put the camera on me. It's, it's on you right now. So everybody knows what's going on. Let me do a little bit of NFL stuff and whatnot. Um, mm, 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 it's a damn shame, but the smell is strong in here. The smell is strong. All right, let me let y'all know what's going on. Um, uh, we're gonna get into some NFL stuff. We're gonna go over the AFC North schedule. I'll bring that up in a second, but first, let me let y'all know something. Is somebody on the phone? Yes. We got another call? Yes. Who? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's happening, Johnny Lang? How you doing, sir? <laughs> It is good to have you. I couldn't get, get you out that third day, could I? You're going to do what? I couldn't oh, get you out that third day. Oh, hey. We got it's all kinds of gangster stuff going on in here, man. What a key. What do you mean Thursday? What's that? You said you couldn't meet with me Thursday? No, I said I got you out a couple days last week, but I couldn't get you out. I couldn't get you out Sunday. Well, you tried to kill me uh, Saturday. You tried to kill me Saturday. First of all, let me let everybody know, Johnny and I. Now I saw that Bob made a comment. He did he want to get in on it too? The wait. Hey, whoever wants to. Johnny Lang and I, we're in a contest to see, and this is like really bad timing to see. Who's going to lose the most weight? Johnny, you can pay me. <laughs> Between now and uh, uh, 
Because we waited on the 24th, and we said September 15th. Can we make it September 24th? Hey, just, Troy. Just Troy. 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 You see, you see. It's more important, Troy. You went in the contest with Johnny Lane. The show. Let, let, me, let me let you up. Let me let, let me let them yeah. show you real quick. Mm -hmm. Take a look, Rod. Mm -hmm. You DJing. Mm -hmm. I am. Hey, I'm, I'm going to do it, but the camera won't be on me by then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I'm out walking, you know, three miles a day, and I and I, I know what I posted that video today. Uh, uh, Troy was probably eating a cheeseburger for watching thinking that mm -hmm. son of a gun. No, no, but I, but I was starving when I did see it though. I was look, it did, it did take it did take my appetite away. I'm like, oh, it's on, man. It's mm -hmm. on. So look, I gotta start posting. Are we? Are we gonna have a Facebook battle? She don't even drink soda. With what's going on? I guess you probably think you don't drink tequila either, but he does. Mm -hmm. See, don't drink tequila. I know, I know, I know, I know. Troy does for sure. I just started. <laughs> look, yeah, probably. yeah. Look. I, I know because last time before that it was something else. Rumble Stillskin. <laughs> Or whatever it is. <laughs> Rumble says, so, uh, so no, I, I just real quick, I, I was listening to you guys and talking about the, the Ravens. Yeah. And, you know, even with what's going on right now, is what we're looking at right now, we're expecting big things. You know, my son always tells me he, he's a pretty smart kid. You know, Flacco didn't even win the, Flacco didn't even win the Super Bowl he was in his 30s. So, you know, uh, at some point, Back, and, but that's what I like to do. But right now we gotta we gotta kind of focus on uh, what's happening, what we do have. I mean, we had one of the best quarterbacks out there. Let's be honest. I mean, it, you know, no matter what you know he has done or not done, or what fans perceive he could have done, doesn't matter right now. What what matters now is is we have one of the best quarterbacks. He signed a long term contract. If he stays healthy with what we have now. We're going to go a good distance to the playoffs. We need to call it a Super Bowl because, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not Christian the great. But uh, yeah. I'm feeling like we're in a pretty good place. So, wait a minute. Uh, I, a quick question, Johnny. Flacco won the Super Bowl in his 30s. Where did y'all get that stat from? He was on his first contract. He was in his fifth year in the league. He was, what, 27? Well, here's the I think he's just saying, but he's he was older than Lamar is now. No, he's not. The Lamar is when Flacco when Flacco Lamar, got his Lamar just got his his six year contract. His no, no, no. What I'm saying at the end of Flacco's fifth year, right? He was older than Lamar at the end of his fifth year. Well, listen. Here, here, here's here's the thing. You know, okay. Why Lamar got paid and why he deserves to get paid? Who deserves to get paid? Of, because of, of his of his talent. Flacco had Flacco had to win to get paid that money. If he didn't win that Super Bowl that year, he doesn't get that $140 million contract. This is true. However, there's also no disputing that Joe Flacco was more successful from a playoff standpoint than Lamar. He's not as exciting as Lamar is, and he doesn't generate well, revenue for the team like Lamar does. Lamar's not as seasoned. Uh, number one, and then if you want to compare playoffs, I mean, Flacco, one of the you know best playoff quarterbacks in history. But right. you know, at what point when he 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 wasn't winning Super Bowls at twenty seven years old? That's that's the point. I'm he, saying that he, Lamar is going to get more seasoned. And, and, and keep in mind, this is a Flacco lover here. He's not. He's not. <laughs> I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand that. I just think that. We got you in the background, gangster. I don't know. I just feel like Lamar has more upside than Joe did. I think Joe flew, um, peaked. One hundred percent. Joe that, peaked that, at the right my, time. That's, that's my whole point. Everybody's, you know, everybody. That's my whole point. Everybody's saying, well, you know, Lamar got paid before he won the big game. Where, where, where Flacco had to win the big game in order to get paid, and that's exactly the point. That is how much more of an upside that Lamar has compared to Flacco, who, in my opinion, very good quarterback uh, for the kind of quarterback he was. And I'm a fan of Flacco. But that's why Lamar got paid, because he has such a huge upside. He has huge upside, and um, 
the, 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 the thing that people don't understand or acknowledge is Lamar generates so much money for the organization because of people watching the game now, watching the team now, merchandising the, the, the primetime games, just the excitement that he brings. So he's being paid on potential. Like you said, um, Joe got paid off of results. Um, well, I think Lamar's, and, and I think that it's going to be worth it. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of both. Completely. I'm a fan of both. Um, yeah, I'm saying that completely out of, I think Lamar is a way better quarterback as far as all around than Joe Flacco. I'm not saying he has Joe Flacco's cannons, but yeah, he still has can, a good arm. His completion to interception ratio is amazing. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Lamar. I mean, you know, he has all the tools. That's why he got paid. And I believe that he's going to follow through. But, you know, that's up, that, that's up, that, that's real. Him staying healthy and, uh, uh, you know, playing. Because you know, once we get in the playoffs, you know, we can't have Huntley, that uh, guy bless him. And I'm glad we have a good backup quarterback. But come on now, you know, it's playoff time. We need, we need game time. We need the big player in there. Yeah. Um, so one thing we don't talk about enough is we as fans and Ravens fans don't talk about enough when people bring up the comparison and talk about the organization, all the worry everyone had about what Lamar was going to get paid, what he's not going to get paid, what he's worth, blah, blah, yada, yada. It's interesting that the Ravens have had two quarterbacks, both of them set the market for quarterback salaries in the NFL. After Joe got his contract, which at the time was the highest paid contract for a quarterback, the cascading effect was everybody started getting paid. Tony Romo got a bigger yeah. contract and wow. did less than half of what Joe did from a from a playoff standpoint. And he had all the stats and he was, you know, MVP and all that other crap. But that was during a regular season. Wow. But whenever it came time for them getting the playoffs, we knew Romo was going to do something to lose the game for them, and he did. Um, when you're that good of a quarterback, and, and I'm not saying that he's as good as Lamar or or, or any of these other, but but he was a quarterback. He should have, I mean, in my opinion, he was he was that good of a quarterback, and that's why they kept paying him because of that hope. That's why we paid Lamar that hope. We don't know if he needs to get it, but but also, you know, also the other thing was Jerry Jones hates to be in second place, right? So. If if Flacco was going to get paid, then 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 um, Jerry Jones wanted Romo to get paid. But then you know Matt Ryan got paid, and Matt Ryan had an MVP and had all the stats. But end of the day, Matt Ryan has a goose egg in that Super Bowl uh, category, and he had better we weapons than Flacco ever had. And anybody that doesn't see that is 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 blind doesn't know the league. So. I, I agree. I, I, am, I agree what I said. I am so happy that Lamar got paid, but I'm even more happy that the Ravens not only paid him, they're giving him weapons they never gave Joe. I think they recognized yeah. that you can have a great dynamic quarterback, and Lamar has been a great dynamic quarterback. But just like the Bulls figured out with, with Michael Jordan back in the day, he can't beat another team by himself. So now we've got receivers that everybody has to respect and be afraid of. We've got a running game that does not necessarily have to involve Lamar, but Lamar makes that element even scarier. And we've got tight ends. One tight end is the top three or four tight end, one of the top three or four tight ends in the league. And the other one is up and coming and nobody's even talking about because this kid was sneaky good last year and is only going to get better. So, um, giving him those weapons, the running game should be back. When running game, I mean Edwards and J.K. Dobbins should um, be much better. That when Lamar does get loose, it's, he's going to have much more uh, um, of an open field to run in because you can't you can't let OBJ and Bateman. And now Zay Flowers run free without double or triple covering somebody. And, and you know, even if they're covered and there's no way in heaven or Howard University that 
<laughs> <laughs> There's no way that um, all three of those guys are going to be covered if they're on the field at the same time. Hey, and Andrews. Hey, how much time do you have? Johnny? And me? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I got a little bit of time. These guys are setting up or filming, uh, doing a little secret, uh, secret project here that, uh, myself, uh, Tim and, and Jimmy are setting up the, uh, the studio right now. And then, uh, but I got, I got a couple of minutes. What, 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 what's this, what's this secret involving? What can, can't you, can't you? Well, no, I, I, well, I mean, if I were to tell you, mm-hmm. anyway, yeah, then, would, then it wouldn't be a secret, especially on the radio. Uh, you know, when there's you know, it would definitely not be a secret. We're, we're Tony, look, I mean, we're, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure I told you the other night, though. Okay, never mind. If you're pretty sure you do, okay, never mind. Hey, real quick, real quick, uh, can you can you yeah. mention uh, Polak Johnny's real quick? By the way, thank you guys. I appreciate you. You know, uh, Brock. Oh Lord, Yale, thank you for having me on. Always, thank you for having me on. Oh, oh, oh Rock to Johnny Dice over there. Uh, oh, the new DJ you know, name. Don't. If, 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 I'm, I'm, I appreciate you letting me come on and let all your listeners know about our event. But before I do that, it, when, you know, when you come up to see the meet the celebrities. And you see DJ Rock Nice up there. Don't expect a handshake because his hands are going to be full of Johnny's. Pause. <laughs> and, 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 and I know it's true too because I, I'm a I've witnessed it. But uh, well, you every, witnessed I, I think everybody, being you know, with, with anybody and everybody who, uh, who's been who's from the Dund- I mean, from the Baltimore area, rather. Uh, and knows that there were, you know, over 15 whole lot Johnny's restaurants at one time that were a uh, part of John Kafka, who was the founder of, uh, whole lot Johnny's and the original, uh, the original whole lot Johnny. Uh, well, uh, because of some leasing issues in 2013, the last whole lot Johnny's restaurant closed and that's 10 years ago. Whole lot Johnny and the, the, the majority owner of whole lot Johnny is John Kafka's. Daughter Margie Kafka, and uh, she, she's a semi retired for Warren Dolphin, who is the other owner of Polak Johnny's, taking care of the day to day business. And I've been chatting with him about a revival of uh, of a Polak Johnny's restaurant. And I mean, original Polak Johnny's restaurant, you know, Polak Johnny's uh, that's that's the uh, that's the star. I know there's a long story, but I want everybody to know uh, how it all came about. So, uh, after chatting, he made a date, which is June 10th. Mm-hmm. So June 10th is going to... Uh-oh, did we lose him? Hello? You still there? You still there, Johnny? I think he accidentally muted himself. You may, have hit the, you may have hit the mute button. He's gone. He's gone now. We lost Johnny Lang. But those of y'all, there is, there, he will be opening up uh, a, a Polak Johnny's restaurant. So those of y'all who are from Baltimore and over 40, 35? 35. 35 older, you will remember, man, they were great. They beat five dogs. They were great. So. Uh, look, we will be there. That's going to be June 10th. Oh, and I will post the address. I, I want him to yell the address real quick. You don't have it, Andy, do you, Rod? The address? No, I don't have it. I can it's, find it. It's going to be over in, like, Edgemere, Dundalkish area. Um, and I will post that on the page later. And, and certainly, hopefully, I wanted to know if he would come in uh, next next week uh, so we could talk about it. All right, well, if he calls back, we'll, we'll, we'll finish that up. They may have been um, rounding out. Uh, let me give you. Let's do some NFL stuff real quick. And if anybody, please, if you know the score, actually, you know what? I'm gonna check real quick. I'm gonna check real quick. I'm gonna come out of this real quick. I'm gonna lose y'all if there's some comments. Yada yada yada. With my Oreos, here they go. Oh shit! Wait a minute. Look. 
Orioles up eight to one with Yale sitting here. Two runs in the first inning, five runs in the second inning. Cleveland must have got one. And then we got one inning, man. Eight to one. What inning is it? It's the oh shit. Why I say fifth? Wait a minute, I tell you again. Hold on. Six. Top of the six. That means we just scored one. And now they now the uh, Cleveland's up. Um, I feel good about that. June 10th from noon to five, Johnny. Lang just said the restaurant. He would do that the um popped out of there. All right, let me go back. All right, I'm back on there, back there. 7216 North Point Road. Yeah, that's Edgeman. what I was trying to find. Get me here. Okay. All right. And guess there's going to be a Polak Johnny Eating contest, man. And we got a celebrity right here. Sound table. He's practicing right now. Some of y'all know him as the juice. Not like OJ. <laughs> DJ Juice, Sir Rock. <laughs> DJ. Yeah. Hey, hey, Troy. Just say it. Because I'm just say it, man. We Troy. got we got you. Jordan, yes, sir. Yes, due sir. Due to the fact that you mean a lot to me, and I really want to support you, and I want to see you victorious over Johnny Lang in his weight con. No, we're going to allow you yeah. to partake in the special treatment we've been having here. I haven't because we don't want you. We don't want you to gain any weight. Uh huh. We want you to be as film and fit and trip as you possibly can. Uh huh. So you cannot have. You ain't got to worry about me, bro. You ain't got to worry. Look. This thing is still heavy. I'm in good shape. But I didn't say that was all mine. Why you calm down, bro? Calm down. People ain't no problem. <laughs> You're scared over there. Y'all scared, but look, look. DJ Rock, y'all understand. Y'all understand. Yale, look. Yale, Yale. The ribs. The brisket. The ribs. Why you why are you why you worry? Why are you worrying about everybody else, man? Do you still have a plane over there? No, I don't. Bro, it's, look, put, put something else in his mouth. Just put something Ooh. in your mouth. That's all I'm going to say. Put something in there. We're going to get you calm. The whole time he had food, he was quiet as hell. We ain't hear nothing. I, 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 nothing. I'm here, to, I'm here to, 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 to feed the masses and, and the missus. So both wives should have some ribs coming their way. That's all That's right. I to say. I'm sorry. I think you made a typo. Did you say brisket? <laughs> the queen's still in there. She's still in there. Uh, let me say something real quick, man. While um, Before say something. Oh, <laughs> no, nah, Troy, listen. We give mm -hmm. Yale a lot of slack around here, but God, the ribs are good. <laughs> Troy, ribs is a problem. Did. It's not a problem. I know he doesn't want to take one, taste one right now. And that's Troy, please, please, Troy. I, 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 look, let me get because I have no problem. Well, look, one, I'm gonna let you wait, man. Let me. I'm gonna take it off the the uh, juice side. Where you, where you going, bro? Huh? Look, let me let me add something real quick. Let me say something real quick. Y'all, must, you must. Are you full? No. Hmm. 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 Tragic. You already right. gave away a half a slap to people that don't even belong in the studio. <laughs> Sir, are you good in there? Yeah, I'm right to go. Okay. How you come from? She said it. Damn. She said it with a pinky up. <laughs> you can see it. But the way she said it, yes, I'm right man to go. You know that pinky was up when she said it. You know it. First of all. Uh -oh. Which is a compliment. Uh oh. You can't come to the office to come to work, but they can come get rid. Oh, you know, already put me down. So he was the olive branch. Yeah, olive branch has been accepted. Yeah, I had hit, I had to laugh on that one. Yeah. <laughs> What, what was going down? That's a and whole slab. Half a slab we missing. I was supposed to trust certain people was going to bring me my rib. I would. But I would. You would have brought me the bones? I'd have brought you the ribs. With the meat and the bones on it. I'd have brought you the ribs. He ain't specifying. I'd have brought you I'd have brought you what you have said. Right. What's that what's that so proper music y'all were gonna read? Yeah, I tried to find that ding. We oh we're gonna have that. I look, I don't think I had one in here. 
I think it's time for us to end the show. We're going to leave or something. We have a technical Self. issue. Self. Cause I had Spell self. self. Spell self. Self. Wait. Troy. Try to find something in here. Troy. Something. No, that ain't going to work. <laughs> it's a misunderstanding here. What's the problem is? <laughs> Yeah, we make enough for everybody. Wait, but right, Misty. So how are you going? How are you going to carry? I'll put him in a backpack. Oh. Backpack. Yeah. Mm. There's plenty enough ribs here. There's, there's plenty enough ribs here for everybody. Mm. Even though I just ate two ribs myself because Troy, they, oh my God, they so tender. They season. He didn't fall off the bone. He didn't mm-hmm. did turn from yellow to red. Yeah. Red can come on for the next six weeks to Birdland. He can come, just, just come in whenever he wants. Ooh, wow. So, so almost as good as your uncles? Yes. We need to go talk about the comparison. Son, oh, that's open mic. That, like, he does no wrong. I understand that. Yeah. Understand hey, Yale. Mm-hmm. You know how you go down Baltimore Street and you oh, got the oh, 2 o'clock club? Here we go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and then you go to I'm, Vegas. The 2 o'clock club. And then you go to Vegas and you see the Bunny Ranch? I've, I've heard of such a place. Okay. Do you see the 2 o'clock club and the Bunny Ranch being the same caliber of places? Now, they both have the same activities there. I'm not, I'm not, that's not, I ain't say nothing about Uncle Ruth. We talking about the two o'clock club and the bunny range. What did that's you what talk, do? What yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You want to know because you ain't been to the two o'clock club or have you? Oh, what about mm-hmm. the two o'clock? Yeah, you know, she might be moonlighting on WMEG or something. But yeah. What in the world? Yeah, just understand, yeah. Two o'clock club and the bunny range, okay? Okay. A lot of fun is had in the two o'clock club. A lot of fun. Yes. Lots of, lots of fun is had in the bunny range. So basically, what you just did is compare my uncle. No, I didn't. Yeah, had a conversation with people that work at WMEG on Berlin. <laughs> and y'all talking about so y'all just happened. If you was a part of working at Berlin on sports show, you would understand the Bunny Ranch, and we were talking about Troy. You got you got the comparison right, Troy. I I'm over here uh, waiting for y'all to finish. <laughs> I'm not sure. When I make that phone call, o- Uncle Mike. <laughs> We're going to pop I want to see. I want. I want to taste some Uncle Mike's ribs. The next time. Mm, mm, mm. When you were, you know, wasn't saying nothing. Two o'clock club before. Didn't say nothing. I'm sure you know, he did. Uncle Mike, these are so good. That sound like them. So I now, seen that. So now you get them brought you some, and all of a sudden. You done forgot all about Uncle Mike and yelled at that thing. The 2 o'clock club. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. Some of his best nights at 1 o'clock in the morning was in the 2 o'clock club. I don't even know where that is. I bet you don't. Um, and and the queen, like, what does the 2 o'clock show have to do with brisket? <laughs> she ain't going to be there. Well, She's like, I need the brisket. Well, uh, well <clears throat> the brisket would be the Luxor. Yes. Brisket would be like um, the Safari Club, mm. and, and and then um, the Luxor in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know none of that. I ain't been to none of those. I don't know nothing. I'm over here, and she keep asking, "What do the 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 uh, two o'clock club in the Bunny Ranch got to do with brisket?" Only thing I'm saying is. The one rib that Troy's going to bring home today, Queen Brody. <laughs> You're understand. <laughs> I don't know. What are you talking about? She had to rinse the whole slab on someone that don't even want him in the first place. Wait, now. All right, let me try this one more time. Where we at? Of course, we Ray was going to win. Rocked him, used a half hour. As soon as he finished eating, boy, as soon as he licked his fingers, he been talking ever since. Let me say something real quick, man. Um, I pulled out this, uh, this guy had a list of explosive runners. Yes, I posted. Did you see? Oh, did you? Are you talking track and field? Huh? You see a runner's track and field? 
No. What's what are you, you talking you, about? Explosive runners in the NFL. Right. Okay. You you when you chewing, you probably can't hear. You smacking real hard. Don't eat the boom. Explosive runners. What's tender now? To make all that noise. Uh-huh. I'm I was gonna I almost said something. I got so something. we're talking about after they break the line of scrimmage or just them lining up in the backfield? Because it's a difference. If you just give me a second to finish. Okay. You won't find out what I'm talking okay. about. Go get us, get it, get him a, another piece of uh <laughs> something. I'm, I'm not messing with the, with the, with the queen <laughs> stash. The queen you stash. Yeah. Mm. You to the queen. Yeah, don't you got a queen? Then listen. Don't you got a queen? Yeah. Sure do. So, so I need to get some pieces of. Yeah, that's this. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was in that pain. There you mm-hmm. Go. Mm-hmm. No, it ain't gonna be all that. No, the Queens is a stash. Yeah, because I made a couple before we go. But anyway, explosive running. So he, came, so you, saw, so you already know what this is all about. Yes. So you saw how he came up with his score. Did you agree with it? I didn't agree with the scoring. Um, and there was uh, two or three I questioned. One or two I questioned. One or two I questioned on the list. Period. But some of these players I'm not following. So. Well, Troy, can you give us a little bit more insight for those that haven't seen the list? Or yeah, yeah, know? I'm gonna give you the top ten. What he did was he he created an explosive sc- score which takes into account each player's top speed, average speed, number of big plays, uh, and more to produce a composite score on a scale from zero to a hundred. All right, that's how he did it. So his top ten runners, uh, number ten, Dalvin Cook. I like Dalvin Cook. Me too. Uh, number nine, Josh Allen. Josh Allen? Yeah. And I agree with that. Josh Allen, nobody talks about him getting hurt running the ball like they do Lamar. He runs hard in, in my they opinion. Talk about, they worry about him getting hurt because he, 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 Oh, yeah, they, they talk. Oh, he even nationally. But he, he, he averaged, what, two, three carry, carry, two, three yards a carry? No. Big yards, man. Yeah, yeah. He, he runs more than he, that. He, he, it's not, it's not a setup where he, they've got running What's plays up, Mike for Andrews? him, but What's he up? has running plays. Where he breaks, where he breaks contain, and will, he looks to truck people. Yeah, yeah, he ain't trying to run out of the way. That I'd be more worried about. But do do you see Josh Allen as a threat as a runner? Yeah, yeah. You have me wondering. I mean, uh, that's based upon past. I mean, all of his past performance. But they've come out and said they're going to restrict his playing style because they don't want him to get all busted up. Okay. And he's very good. He plays like Cam, Cam like Cam Newton. Cam Newton. Yeah. Okay. Gangsta. I see you Saturday. Am I gonna see you Saturday or no? Oh. It's someplace, right? One of the one no, that's that's the first, that's the tenth. That's the tenth. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well maybe I'll see you Saturday. If not, then if I need to come here, I'll just come here. Okay. I'll, I'll be on the show. Okay. Oh, I'm scared. Hey, drive safely. <laughs> Thank you. Whatever you have to do, protect them ribs. Oh, they ain't going on the seat with the seatbelt across. That's, That's the way I did the banana pudding. I know what you're saying. Take it to the go. All right. Number eight, Derrick Henry. Yeah, see, so he's a whole prop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because he'll run you over, and if he gets past the line of scrimmage, he will carry you. If he- Derrick Henry's number eight, I hate to see the next seven. Well, the thing is, I only, right. I'm only, I'm only go necessarily with the, and I, what I did not do is write down the numbers. I'm mad about that. Uh, number seven, Saquon Barkley. He's a problem. Later that the team is, t- I don't know about last year. Last year, he had his best year in a long time. Last year, well, he, so he did well last year. Yeah. Cause okay. last year was the first year he, he played more than 14 games. I mean, he played 14, more than 14 games. I don't know when he came out, dude, dude is, dude is crazy. Yeah. All right, number six, Nick Chubb. See, Nick, Nick Chubb to me is not a dynamic runner, but he'll give you eight or nine or 12 yards in a walk. But it, it'll be the steady boom. How do you get 12? Like, he's not juking anybody, mm-hmm. but when he gets past the line of scrimmage and it's a linebacker that he gets past and leaves a leaves a running back, I mean, a, a cornerback on the island. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one right here. Okay. Eh, no, no, no. He's, okay. No, Tony Pollard. Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that 100%. Is this Baltimore boy? I don't think so. Okay. Maybe I'm getting his name confused. 
That's because he's cowboy, and you know you're really a fan of cowboy. Well, I'm, had that kind of, I'm just saying, somebody already pointed that out. Johnny Lang already I'm pointed that out. Throw, Troy. You, you want him to be here, but anyway, number four, got Lamar. We all know about Lamar. See, I expected Lamar to be number two. All right, let's. We got Lamar number four. Let me start. Let me go to number one and come back down to Lamar. No, no, no. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Cause, cause I, yeah, yeah, I, at no lower than two. Right. If you said one, I'd be fine. I get it. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'm with you on that. And you probably thinking, you thinking one or two for Lamar or no, number two. I was thinking two or three. I wasn't okay. thinking number one because of his position. But I, I was thinking two or three. Well, you got a couple of running backs in here. I see. That. Now number three, uh, Travis from the Jags. Um, Travis Etienne. Yeah. So. This is my problem with Travis Etienne. This, okay. this is the other one I had a problem with. Okay, because I think I'm with you. Travis Etienne did not play his rookie year. He got he got hurt in training camp. Mm -hmm. Last year is the only only judgment you have. That's the only uh, uh, bite of his talent that you saw. That was this, his sample was last year. He was a, a heck of a runner in college, but I don't see Travis Etienne. Even though he's playing running back, I don't see him being a better runner, dynamic, explosive runner than than Lamar. And I say that mm -hmm. not watching Etienne and the Jags as closely. Right, right. But that's I don't need so maybe it's legit. But you think I, he's only going by last year though. He can't. He can't go by any other league because it's the only year he played. He oh. he, he he missed his whole rookie year. Go ahead. You, did you see that? <laughs> I'm, 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 all right. Back to the loose. couple of ribs is what's going to come home. <laughs> uh, Seahawks, Kenny Walk, Kenneth Walker. See, that's the other one. Because I don't, no one, I mean, we don't get to see the Seahawks play that much because one, they're not so good that they're on TV every week like they used to be locally here. And they're not getting national games. So I don't know. I don't know about Kenneth Walker, and I don't know about Etienne. I'm gonna pay more attention to him this year it, because it is. It, it, it's him. We play. We, we play both. I mean, that's true. That's true. I'm uh with you. I saw those two, and I was like, "Is it really?" I and because of what you just said about um Etienne, I was like, "Oh yeah." You know, I he had never crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you, do you like Justin Fields being number one? No. I think I'm okay. So we, so we actually here. You can see here. Yeah. So because I would put Lamar above him, I would definitely put Lamar above him. Um, and I don't. I would put Lamar above Justin Fields because here's the deal: Justin Fields, when he was at Ohio State, mm -hmm. was not known to be a running quarterback. Okay, that I didn't know. Right. So in the NFL, he's become a running quarterback because he's running for his life. Okay, wait a minute. Quick, Bob says he's home. His flight got canceled. Bob, are you telling the truth? Oh, you, were you, were you? You never know what Bob. You, boy, I, from being at your house, house is that he's not home yet. He'd be home if if uh, he's not he's not flying away. Yeah, <laughs> he won't be never left. I'm like so because he's go he's about to make me ask that. D. I'm sorry. Go back to Justin, man. What were you saying? So he's been running for his life. It's not his offensive line has been horrible. He hasn't had receivers. Um, he becomes dynamic out of out of necessity, not out of design. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of Lamar's runs previous years have been out of necessity or just the fact that he's. He's that dynamic, but they also had design runs for Lamar. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't think Chicago's had a lot of design runs for Justin Fields, and I don't think he's a more explosive runner than Lamar. Okay, but the fact that there's Lamar, Justin Fields, and and Josh Allen, three quarterbacks on this list of of, of running backs, running players, and no wide receivers, I question that. Because I need, you know what? I need to read in detail what he was going by. Because I just, I just took a, a clip of of how he came over to school. But I need to read. I might, 
I'm wondering if I'm leaving something out because is this stat based or opinion based? It's 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 the, the guy who wrote the article came up with the came up with the uh, metric of what he based the score on, and then he plugged the players in based upon the score the scoring system he created. Right. So it's not it's technically not his opinion, but he created it to. I mean, I could write a list of the top ten DJs in 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 America. God. That I've listened to, that I've. Well, do I make the list? You, you make the list because he's only listened to eight. So I'm not <laughs> but it's it's also subjective because there are people who like DJs who talk a lot, right? And there are people who like DJs that don't talk, right. and then like there are people who like DJs that play a bunch of house music, and then DJs people who like DJs that play a lot of of uh, hip hop, go go, yeah. and hip hop and reggae, right? Yeah. So. The criteria is different. If if I create the criteria and then I create the list, how legit is it? Right. Well, if but if he creates the criteria and he's, I'm assuming he's doing this. If he's analyzing everybody, you know what I mean, just based on his criteria. See, because I know what he's going by. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's what you're going by, and you looked at everybody. You looked at receivers. I don't know how he pulled the. I mean, I guess you can pull stats easily now with. Uh, but it's not stats, a lot, and I don't remember the article, and I'll look it up. But it's not just stats; it's about how these yards are generated, yada yada yada. And you can plug anybody in there, and you can leave people out. Okay, a big part of it. Okay, average speed that does make a difference. That makes a difference. And top speed, everybody's not going to hit a full four. Right, everybody. So you would think Tyreek Hill will be on there, and that's so that's a good point. Asking like, you know, is it opinion based or stat based? Because how in one conversation we're going to say Tyreek Hill is the fastest man in the NFL, and he's not even on that top ten list. Well, if he's he, if he's saying okay, top speed, average speed, number of big plays, Tyreek Hill con contributed all of all of them. But did he make? Because I'm I'm if if I look. All I can remember is the Baltimore game, and, I'm, and I get I'm, I'm getting mad as I'm thinking about his 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 top plays. I don't know how many. Is he talking about top plays as far as? I might do, I want to read this from the beginning because I I didn't I don't have the entire right, and I and I posted the results with and I I looked at the the criteria, but I didn't I didn't know you were going to talk about it on the show. So. Yeah. See, because yeah. I definitely would have said, guess what? It's in the group. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But but here's the thing, right? If he said, I looked at the top, I looked at all 32 starting quarterbacks, okay. 33, because there's a team that's splitting, and all, if he did all court, 40 some starting running backs in the NFL and receivers, and, and, and didn't, and didn't, and didn't, Add receivers. Oh, if he said that, then you'd be like, okay. Okay, so then we can look at this. Mm -hmm. But if you say explosive runners, and, and and it's explosive runners is the criteria. I mean, right. that was the title, right? right? Right, So if you look at explosive runners, that means once you get the ball in your hands, mm -hmm. what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. Not So Hollywood should be in there. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but DK Metcalf should be on there. Yeah, he's faster. You, did you see Metcalf posted something? Oh, he wants to race Tyreek Hill. Yeah, yeah, I want to see that. Who do you think's fast? I think Tyreek Hill is faster. Yeah, is it because of how big Metcalf? Because Metcalf is fast. He's extremely fast. But uh, why is why does it seem like it seems like Hill is running from? I'm, because he's tried to do this before, and it seems like Hill. Will race anybody, yeah. But he hasn't raced him. Why? Why is this true? Now, is it a plot to just generate some money? It could be. You never know. But I know, I know this: that Tyree Kill has gone to track meets and said, "Hey, let's lace them and race them." Yeah, and any age, any age. That's true. I don't know. I don't know that DK Metcalf has done it, done that, and I don't know that they have said, "Meet me on Saturday at yada yada." Like he did it. with. Was it Terrell Owens and uh, he ran with yeah? But I think that was probably Owens. Like, come on, race me, yeah, because yeah, because so. But I can probably give Owens a they run. They can do it. They can make an event of it. The NFL coaches and GMs are going to lose their mind because that's a that's a hamstring weight. Do that in the off season then. 
Yeah. Well, it's you. It depends on what you do. Yeah, because, I mean, it, it, you know, like, they had fits with Bo Jackson playing baseball, and rightfully so, because we saw what happened. Um, but, you know, for, <laughs> like, 20 years, um, uh, geez, man, I hate this when I do this. His name went out the top of my head mm. that quick. Mm -hmm. Um Played played corner for Daryl Green what, for twenty years. Daryl Green was the fastest man in the NFL for twenty years, and they used to have the NFL's fastest man competition. You see him run against Herschel. He ran against Herschel. He ran Willie he, Willie Gold. He, I was I I I, I, yeah, I, he, I just he, watched that. I didn't watch it. I remember it's on YouTube. I mean, I, I just I'll look at I look at. But I remember him running down Tony Dorsett. When Tony Dorsett had like a seventy yard run, look. and Daryl Green came down and walked him. Nate. Who is diehard Washington fan, right? Mm -hmm. I think he likes the Ravens a little bit. But he, as soon as somebody, when we were working at a bowl, as soon as somebody brought up speed and whatever, and they mentioned the Cowboys, he was sitting on that one. Oh, no. You know, and, you know, Nate, you know how quiet he is. Yeah. But Nate, Nate never forgot that. And then I had to thank goodness for you two because I didn't remember it. Right. And then I pulled it up. And it's like, it's, it's like they show the play, then it's like, they show an arrow on Daryl Green, and it's like it's like a cheetah chasing a gazelle. Yeah, <laughs> on this area, Daddy. Yeah, and you and you and Dorsett. It's not like he's not fast. And this was Dorsett <laughs> in the peak of his career. And Daryl Green, I think, was a rookie that year. I th I don't think anyone knew about Daryl Green that year, except the, the except the skins. But I also know that Daryl Green, when he retired, was like 39, 40 years old, playing corner. And still won NFL's fastest man competition. Yeah, yeah. Daryl Green was a was a, was a unique cat. They so, and I think Tyreek Hill is in that same category. Think so, and I think DK Metcalf is very very fast. I don't know if he's in that in that Tyreek Hill category. I I, I, I want to bet. I'd bet on Hill, but I would watch it. Like as long as they pay per view. If not, then y'all can tell me about it. Somebody right. be out there with their phone. But but to the point. Yeah. To the point. Did. did or take that stuff into consideration, and I don't know that he did. We're gonna go back and read that. And and he didn't. And what is what is the sample size? Like he said, he didn't say all the players in the NFL. So it could just be players that he watched. He, I look at a lot of film, but if you're only grabbing the people you want to look at, you know, I mean, you like if you look at uh, Pro Football Focus, mm -hmm. they mostly do stats, but they do everybody. And that's how they come up with their with their stats. Mm -hmm. It's everybody. I don't know if this guy did everybody. So I don't know if it's legit, but he works for NFL Network or NF, yeah, NFL.com. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he can they'll they'll post his stuff. We'll find out. I mean, generally all of their ratings, we always disagree with something. Yeah. And but I but in fairness, I really I need to reread that whole thing. Cause I I don't remember you 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 really make me think when you when you mention receivers. It didn't cross my mind about the receivers. I was just so busy like, who are these? What are these two doing there? And then I'm curious to hear. So I'm gonna try to look there. Well, since you since you because I didn't share it, so I can go click click on the on the group. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna reread that. But let me give you one more thing, man. Before we get shoot, it's getting late. You rock is quiet. Are you sleep? No. Oh, okay. All right, making sure. All right, let me let me give y'all top eleven free agents. Uh, did you did you post it? Look, I gotta make sure. Did you, you talk about that too? No, but I know who they are. Okay, all right. Number eleven, and I started eleven for a reason. Only I just do ten, right? Houston, Houston. You remember him, right? No, he's a quarterback. No, he's our pass. He's the pass rusher we've had for the last two years. We signed the one year contracts that I think they'll bring back. They're probably waiting. Well, since the since. Calais is gone. I really thought Calais would just. I really yeah, thought it was just a matter of time we get Calais back. Hey, Campbell and and then see him in that damn Atlanta. Um, I haven't seen the uniform picture yet. Somebody, I'm, I'm in a I'm Falcons glad. group. I'm glad I haven't. See, he's, like, he's a free agent, so he ain't been picked up yet. No, he was Calais. He signed with Atlanta. Yeah, like two weeks after the Ravens let it go. Okay. Some somebody put me in Atlanta Falcons group, man, and I'm so afraid. It it kills me not to comment. Because they were, half of them, they were talking about Lamar, and half wanted him, other half didn't. Why are we doing this? And other half was like, well, remember Michael Vick? You know what I mean? They were they yeah. were all over the place. And I wanted to get in there and tell them they all suck and whatever. But I didn't <laughs> want to get kicked out because I, I like seeing 
uh, the opinions and stuff, right? But it's probably it's a one that I made it through the through the year. I'm probably gonna get kicked out. It's so as soon as somebody clicks and sees all that rage, they're gonna know. But anyway, all right, Justin Houston, uh, Callahan, quarterback, Bryce Callahan, number nine, Frank Clark. By the way, Houston is 34, Callahan 31. Next edge rusher, Frank Clark. What do you think about him? 30 years old. Frank Clark got a big contract with Kansas City and uh, has been a force but not a dominating force. The reason they let him go was because he wasn't living up to the expectations on that contract. But I would take him or Houston. Okay. Okay. Well, he's four years younger, so. Yeah, but that'll mean he's good. Okay. You're right about that. But maybe. Because. Houston posted what? What do you have? Like eight sacks last Houston year. Houston did, yeah. Houston, Houston matches. fit with us, right? Now, I don't know if that was Calais causing some of that, or it was. It was the fact that he's a wily veteran and uh, he knew how to do what he needed to do to get it done. And I could always tell he's going to get a sack because he went in a three point stance and he he squatted in that three point stance, and it was like, oh. So squatted. he was saving his uh his yeah, uh he was, he was he was he was he was he was picking the spots. Okay. All right, number eight, Teddy Bridgewater. We don't need him, but no. D- don't you think it's kind of unusual that he's still out there? Don't you think he, somebody would? Teddy well, Bridgewater is at a stage in his career now that um, he will be a quarterback that the team will sign when they have a they have a concern about a backup quarterback or their starting quarterback gets get injured. Yeah, you know, I thought for sure after the draft, it's like okay, he can. Uh, you know, if you got who you wanted once the, once the quarterbacks were picked, but I, I thought he would be on the team by now. But uh, but I, I I'm not worried about him. Melvin Ingram, another edge rusher, 34. Uh, Leonard Floyd, another edge rusher, seemed to be 30 and 34. Number four, Marcus Peters, man. And I asked you about him earlier. I, what happened with him talking to the Raiders? What happened? Clearly nothing. Clearly they didn't sign him. But here's the deal, Marcus Peters. Posted on his social media that he misses his kids. He misses That's his right. guys. He misses his family. That's he right. wants to come back and play for the Ravens. I think, I really think that EDC is holding out to see how things go with the uh, mini camp. And see if they make an offer or see if we got room for them. Uh, just to see how you got re- young people. And this is what, you see, the, the, the business of the NFL is what fans lose track of. Um, When you draft players and you don't draft them in the first round, you draft them maybe in the third or fourth round, you give them two to three years to gel. And if they don't gel by that third year, then you start looking like, well, this was the, he was not a failure, but he didn't live, live up to expectations. So I guess in some way that's a failure. But when you got two corners that you drafted in the fourth round last year, you want to see if they're going to be able to be what you expect them to be before you go out and bring in a veteran who's going to take snaps away from the develop from their development. So I think they're trying to see how these two kids we drafted in the fourth round last year. Plus, you brought you, you brought in Rock Yosin. We're going to see if I think they'll do that before they bring in Marcus Peters because you bring in Marcus Peters, you're retarding the 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 development of two guys that you only got for three more years. Maybe. Um. Oh wait a minute. Quick. Uh. Where, where my look? Now I gotta find my bike. Quick. Quick. Say. This shit is cracking me up. Oreos up eight to three. Uh oh. Get a seven couple rounds. Eight to three though. <laughs> and they're in the seventh inning. So. I can I can live with that. Let's hurry and get this game over with, though, because we need to get back on the uh, we need to get back on that winning track, especially since Yale is paying attention now. So that's uh that's that's definitely important. That's scary. Yeah. It's definitely important. Do we do we need to get excited at this point? Because it's still early in the season. Yeah, it's like this. Every every the, this is what happens to me. I notice there's one game that got away from us. Um, which was the Boston Red Sox game. That game got away from us, and we had to won. All all uh, McKenna had to do was catch the ball game over. We win, go home, and we lost that game. Now, the game against, right now, for me, the Yankee game, where we were here, when we were talking 
uh, last week and we were up four to nothing. I feel like that one got away from us too. Now, everybody says, well, bounces out, or Orioles will steal one. I don't know where that still has come from yet. But when you get to the end of the year and you're two games out for missing the wild card, Hmm. And you look at those games. It's the same way with the um, with the Ravens. I mean, it's more devastating because you can remember easily ten weeks ago, as opposed to you know three months ago. You know what I mean? Even though it's it's kind of the same time, but ten weeks, ten games. Yep. You know what I mean? So when you so last week when we're looking at that game, that, uh, who was it? Um, was it Miami? Whatever happened where we clearly had the lead and the defense fell apart. That was, that was there were several games. The, the, those early games. Right. Give me one of those where we're further we're less stressed at the end of the year with getting into the playoffs. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm saying yeah. so with the Orioles, yeah, it's early, all the games count, but I know um you you truth is you do have more time to recover from the stakes. And stuff and like baseball. In yeah. baseball. Yes. Baseball, yes. basketball. And as you pointed out a couple of weeks ago, it's the series, not the games. Right. Whereas with football, every single game counts. Yes. Yes. And and and, and I guess your series in your division makes a big difference from oh, yeah, so where you, you play. Division. Yeah. But it's like try just try to win the series. So the, by the Orioles losing last night, it's not the end of the word world. However, it's more um it's it's less stressful because the Orioles they lost yesterday. All right, now they're playing today. Let's 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 win. With the Ravens, they lose Sunday. How long you gotta be mad? Six days. Yeah. Now for me, it depending on who's playing Thursday, because now I'm into it's like the following weeks. So depending on who's playing Thursday, I might not be as mad because it's starting the following week. And if it's somebody in our division that I'm like, okay, Pittsburgh loses Thursday, okay, I'm going to recover. But it clearly takes me to the weekend. It's a Friday for me to um, – um, Yeah, I, I'm with you. When they lose, I'm, when they win, I'm happy for a month. <laughs> lose, I'm happy for two months. I mean, I'm mad for two months. Um, it, it, it takes me a lot longer. Like, do not even talk to me after a loss, especially if it's a loss like the Miami loss where we had the game in hand and then – Boom, 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 boom. Um, for example, we don't lose that game in the second half of the season because the defense it gelled and, Yo. and we had figured some stuff out. And we had Roquan Smith, and they knew where to put Hamilton. And so we didn't, we wouldn't have lost that game. You know what, what burns me up? Like, I hate losing with anything. And especially yeah. when I'm rooting for the Ravens, it's like a very, very upset for me. But what makes it so much worse is. These non true friend, true fans of the team, and these not people that don't understand football, they always they quick to want to play lame. You know, if we up twenty one points, or oh, they the greatest team on earth, we lose by one. They a bunch of bums. Where they do that at? You can't have it both ways. You the, know, the key is you gotta listen to um, the same people because. The wave, the wave is always moving, uh -huh. but there, there are certain people that I key on that I that I hear from all the time, and I and I can there's just some that win or lose, they not happy. Right, right. So I so right. I just separate them. Right. It's it's like you know what I mean. It's like y'all. Yeah. It's like they don't like the defense. They don't like the offense. They don't like Harbaugh. They don't like the front office. They don't like Lamar getting paid. They don't like Lamar not getting paid. So why are you a fan? Right. Right. What are you? What are you a fan of? If you're mad, if you don't like anything about the right. And this next comment may sound sexist, but that's the reason why I really appreciate people like Shelly, um, Sheila, um, Lanice, because they're not just fans and they're not going on hearsay. They're actual football fans and they have knowledge of the game. So I can have a conversation with them. But it's nothing worse than you having a conversation with someone female. Um, it's even worse if it was a male, but female. Way worse if it's a male. Yeah. And you having a conversation and she was like, Yeah, we got four first downs yesterday. The first down don't matter. Do you understand? That's not putting the points on the board. You're only saying that because you want to be relevant. Yeah, so the worst for me was after we did my original, That's my, my, mm -hmm, it my, had too much. my original uh, Facebook group, which got to be 19,000 people before I shut it down, 
when we cut Flacco, I'm sorry, I'm not Flacco, when we cut Heath, the, um, one of the women in the group made the comment, he, how could they cut Heath after he helped us win the Super Bowl? Like, like he wasn't even on the team when they won the Super Bowl. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, the first Super Bowl. Okay, the first Super Bowl, he was the first round draft pick after we won that Super Bowl. He he didn't. Well, the second Super Bowl. No, he wasn't on the team. We won the second Super Bowl. He had already been gone. So please sit down. That does happen a lot. Right, but then you got Mm -hmm. this. And I've heard this is the this is the thing that gets me about men who call themselves football fans or Ravens fans and, and and know the game when they say something stupid. Not as bad as how many first downs, whatever. But I don't see how. I don't see why the Ravens uh, don't start Huntley because oh. you see how good he is. And, I, and I'm just using the name Huntley. Oh. But Wait, you see how good he true. is in the preseason. Well, preseason. He's playing against future truck drivers <laughs> and Walmart workers. Walmart workers. You know, I'm not disparaging Walmart workers and truck drivers. Their career is not going to be in the NFL. The kid they got on the team now, uh, Ben Mason. He's a, he, I don't know why he's on the team, other than he went to Michigan and and John Harbaugh's mom loved him at Michigan and all this. But he he, he doesn't even look good in preseason when they let him play. Who who you talking about? Ben Mason. But he's behind. He's he's he he's behind uh, Patrick Ricard, right? So. Why you used up his? Why using up a, a a spot on the team for a guy who's never going to play? You know, um, so yeah. So, but that that's the one. There and, was a lot of Huntley's better than Lamar last yeah, year. Why can't we get that back. money when we got Huntley? When we got it cost Huntley. your mind. And it's the same thing when we had Flacco and Tyron Taylor. Yes. You know how yes. good Tyron is in preseason. Yes. That, and it's always the fourth game in the preseason when Tyron looks great. That was a, a friend of uh, the Queens, a friend of hers who was so so called Ravens fan. And all every time we lost, it was Flacco. Every time. And just sitting there going, bro, you you're not watching the game. It's not always anybody the same guy's fault every game. It just can't it can't be. I get it. Now when they win, he don't want to give Flacco the coin. No, no, it's a defense. Right. Is everything he points. This is the defense. Now, when Tyrod finally left, oh, okay, Bob's made me nervous. Second and third, no outs, go O's. O's, O's are bad. I'm like, okay, because he last time he posted was eight to five, and every time I've said the score, you know that eight, it was eight to one, eight three to five. So, you know, I'm like, are we gonna have to um throw me out, turn your hat around, <laughs> throw me out the field, <laughs> and take my ribs with me? But when Tyrod. I forgot what team he go to Buffalo. I forgot he went to Buffalo. With the Buffalo, and, yeah. and we played against him, and we wore him out. Yep. He. With your boy, I said, I know you a Bills fan that day. We talked about. I said all that Tyrod shit you was talking. And this, this is the one, his friend. And I'm like, uh, who? Oh, he's always wearing Raven stuff. Mm-hmm. I know he lives down in the D.C. area, so I'm kind of proud of it. But I'm like, but you complaining, and it's always Tyrod Taylor. And and the reason that we won is because of the defense, not because of the hurting Flacco put on him. But it was like I, I it's like if you want to be okay, I learned something from my grandfather. I, and I might have told this story before. I was anti Ripken. Oreos, that's when we had Billy, Cal, and the father. I'm like, we have too many Ripkins on the team. And 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 I'm over his house. So he's annoyed with me, but I don't know it. But I, I, as as I know how I am, I'm like, yeah, he was pissed off by that. He said, what what, what you say? And I said, uh, I said, yeah, you're too many Ripkins. He said, I thought you was an Orioles fan. I said, but you know they play on the Orioles. I said, yeah, but when they come out, they get on my nerves. They're going to strike out, double play. They, they, I, I just don't want them getting a hit. He said, so let me get this straight. And, and it's like for him to talk while the game is on, mm-hmm. I, it didn't dawn on me. The game at a Western, you just leave him alone, right? <laughs> you don't talk. <laughs> and he's talking to me, and he's like, so you're an Orioles fan, but you don't like three players 
that's on the Orioles. And if two of them in the lineup, so in the game's on the line and they come up, you just want them to strike out. And I said, what do you mean? It's like, so it's the ninth inning. It's two outs. Cal comes up or Billy comes up. What, what you want to have? And I was like, well, he said, so either you, either you want the Orioles to win or you don't. And and I can't really talk to him like I want to. Mm-hmm. He was laying out some good points. If that's my team, which is which is when I say to adults like like certain people, they still find a way to skirt around it. Who can? Which you know this if you're a fan, it's not true. Right. And after I had that conversation, not yet, but maybe about a week or so later, when I was like, yeah, I got to start rooting for it, you know, because sure enough, it happened. Two outs in the ninth inning, we lose it. Here comes Billy Ripken. Who, who did strike out a lot? <laughs> so, y'all, I always got something about one player, right? Billy Ripken was the only person on with two outs and, and and nobody on. Billy Ripken could hit into a double play. I don't think. Rolling through that for a while, too. He said, bases loaded, no outs. Gunner Henderson is up. This, this is looking good. No triple play, please. But um, we, we're up. We're we're back with bases loaded and no outs. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. You guess what? You uh, Oreo or Ravens? No, I was gonna say Ravens. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just saying. So we're we we it's the seventh inning still. So that's a good sign. Yeah. I, ho- I hope he's gonna tell us that they score. Try to put some more dedicated fan, someone that has all purple in their basement and thirty five Ravens jerseys, or someone whose life is just shot to hell because we just lost. How does the person with the purple basement handle a loss? Boy, going win. <laughs> he should have ran the ball. We got the best running backs in the league. Why he want to pass the ball and we on the two yard line? Yeah. See, to to me, um, he I always wanted to get into these. Um, and people have asked me, should get these these double play. Nobody scored. Shit. Well, wait a minute. How did nobody score with no outs? So they threw the ball home. Yeah. So I guess, was it home the first? Might have been tapped. They might have grounded to the third baseman, tapped third, he shoot home. But there's still one out. There's two out. Yeah, if it's a double it's play. Bases so loaded, double play. Right, but ground still got, we still got one out. We to still, go. go. So somebody yeah. still up. Somebody still up the bat. And I think first that. and second. So sorry. Yeah, first, runners on first. Because that's the only way they could have not scored. Yeah. So it would be runners on first and second. Um... Well, well, it could be. It's, well, it's, 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 they went to first, second, and third. They probably went home in first. That's yeah. usually that's usually first. Yeah. So we might still have second and third. We gotta wait for Bob to tell us. <laughs> damn, damn. Yeah. But um, look, I'm already look. I got my Ori Bird ready to run across the, the screen. Damn. Yeah. He could, he could have line drive the first left first baseman left his feet. That's true. Damn. And then come down and the runners off the bag. So that's a double play too. Yeah. It's, if we were not watching the game, we don't know how it happened. We just know when <laughs> playing. <laughs> Consider myself to be um, a very, very diehard Ravens fan. Mm-hmm. I don't have a lot of Ravens game, but I do have some. Um, I don't have the Ravens plastered all over my house. You know, I do have some Ravens memorabilia here in the station. However, that doesn't mean I love the Ravens any less. You know what I mean? I agree with that. And, and it just... Burns me up. He said, "Home the first. Home the first. Okay. Next four out. Oh my God! Three outs. No score. Mm-hmm. You saw the game, huh? Where is Shelly? Shelly <laughs> probably boo loving tonight. She probably at the game. Yeah, well, you think about that either. Yeah, she may be at the game. Damn. You know, but I, I just think it. That was part of one of the things Gosh. that even how Welcome to Berlin came about. Um, when, when, besides the fact of me knowing Troy before the show, when I see Troy, Troy is the, is what I, I want all Ravens fans to be, you know? And then when I saw he was excited about both of the birds, I'm like, I can sit there and talk to that man without us getting into it. So that's kind of what brought the birth on. But, and I, I must I must say, all of the supporters of this show mm-hmm. are true fans to me. Whether they root for the Ravens or they root against the Ravens, I have yet to come across anyone we've met through the show that was like a Fraganagle friend, a fan. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I can have an intelligent discussion or mm-hmm. banter with them because I know they believe in what it is they're saying and they know what they're saying. Right. So if we can get on here and be like, yes. 
Tom Brady was the greatest quarterback ever. Mm -mm. I like it, but we knows enough football that we can understand why he's saying that. I admit stuff after people retire. I don't, I don't, I don't get nobody credit that I don't like. Doug Jeter finally got something out of me, and I still had to wait a, a two years. I wouldn't even say it when he retired. So you don't, you don't think Derrick Henry's a great runner? No. Would you try to tackle him? Yes. Yes. I'm and, sorry, and, and fight after, Tyson right after. 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 <laughs> Man, no. Lord, scared the hell out of me. No, he, he people make business. I would dumb about there. I, no, I do. I yeah. What could I still? No. Yes. Look, here's the here's the thing. When it comes to, I think when it comes to fans, and I see these contests and stuff, and it's like like somebody like like a good example, Captain Defense. I would love to do that. I don't have the time. I, I would love to be able to run around and go and go and go to the games and make appearances and all that. I mean, maybe he's getting paid for some. Maybe he's not. He's probably volunteering a lot of his time. The fact that he came here, I give him a. a I was that was major. Yeah, I was impressed that he took the time to come here. That happened when he lived in Baltimore. He's, he don't. He's a long way away. He lives in Upper Marlboro or something. Didn't he say that? He's further than he. He's further than he was over an hour. Some change away. Isn't he like like a prince? Frederick? Prince Frederick. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was he, over an hour or something over there. County. He, yeah. Somewhere down there. Yeah. Somewhere down there, but oh, well. on this side, other things. So, so. Um, people weren't close. Yeah. I would love it. When I see people like him, uh, you know, there's no way you can compete. Or, 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 or um, first of all, if you don't go to every game, Dan, Dan, that takes a shirt off. Mm -hmm. Dan the fan. I've been trying to get him to come in here. Oh, uh, that spells Ravens at the game. Yeah. I, I was trying to get Real him to fan. come in, huh? Real fan, Dan. Yeah. I'm like, you to respond to my uh, DM. He <laughs> like, I need you to respond. But um, uh, uh, yeah, Wes is cool. I I I enjoyed him coming in here very much. So, and he gave us a complete two hours. He he was open about not only his personal story but his mm -hmm. journey to be captain defense. Mm -hmm. He showed us a lot of love, man. So I will never ever forget that moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, even I, I even you use for example. The funny thing is, I never knew. Here, I never knew how much of a Ravens fan you. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and as much as I was seeing you, that's a weird part. But we never. Every time I saw you, it was in the summer. I guess I don't know. I guess I didn't see you because you was at the game. I don't know what happened. But for a while, Cleveland starts with two straight hits. Keep going, true. Let's stop him from watching. Look, we got a new Yale. You can watch something else if they score. Turn on Gunsmoke. <laughs> What's impressive about Yale outside of his thesis every week? <laughs> okay. I got the history channel. When you start talking, I got to get <laughs> He's always on point. Like, I don't know about that. He, oh, I'm not talking about his opinions. opinions. I'm not talking about his opinions, though, Troy. I'm, what are you talking about? I'm talking about his facts. His facts. Well, his memory. Yes. But it's unbelievable. Exactly. It's like when he when like when he was talking about the Lincoln assassination and how that made that play was and how the bullet went by his head. He's like, I heard something. B. First off, <laughs> I was not there. Okay. Were you in line? Were you in pop? No. When you was in the, in no. the theater. I just saw him run out the stage out out, out, out the stage door backstage door <laughs> like man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you, you, but yeah, man, you um, you so like like to have you. I was like, don't bitch at me. I ain't bitching. <laughs> well, find DeAndre. Can you? It was it, it to um, like that would be like to have you. It's the same way in talking talking to Bob. Bob um. <laughs> Has all this, all this stuff. That was brilliant. Shit. Oh my god, man! He needed to do a home invasion the day he showed us. He did. You see? Well, uh, I'm assuming Bob, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So a lot of the stuff that was that when we did the, uh, oh, assuming that came from because oh, as god, I think yes. about it, it was a lot of sports. It was stuff. all of the, me the memorabilia came from Bob. That came from you, Bob. You could just yes. Bob. You could have just slid me. Yeah, Johnny said that him. though. Huh? Johnny said that. John, John, Johnny said that when he was on the mic at the thing. Was a, 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 okay. Bob donated all the proceeds to the school for the blind. Bob, you're a great guy, man. You're yeah, a great yeah, guy. Yeah. You're, you're, look, your character is terrible. So, I think you. 
just I had to say this and I always think about Bob when my I had two scenes in the Baltimore Bomb. So one, they had me naming people, this is who you need to watch, and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm talking about his character, right? Mm-hmm. So that you're like Carbos, Carbos, you know, and I'm like, and Johnny's like, uh, yeah, so you know, who was I because they're telling me what they're telling me who to talk about, and then I and then I oh, play, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, you can keep watching, Bob. In fact, you can turn the turn the sound back on too. You gotta make some kind of adjustment. But to see his um I don't know. When I watch it now, I'm I'm sliding stuff. I'm going back. So I will go back and look at Bob's part now. I can I can have you ever seen it? No, I need to get to it. It is on it's on YouTube now. Okay. So I gotta I'll look for it. Yeah, or I'll 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 post it. Because I posted on the King Brody page, but by who knows where that is. I'll I'll copy it. Okay. So you can go right to it. And um so find something. But it was I don't know, it was just funny to I never saw him. I saw Wink, because Wink and I, that's how I met Wink, because we we're in the same scene. But I never saw, I never did a scene with him or Johnny or and all these people running around. And then I'm at the set with some of the scenes. So I'm just watching. That's in fact, I met Johnny off of TikTok. I don't know if I ever told you that or not. It was he was he kept, I'm scrolling. And his ass kept popping. He had an Oreo hat on. I was like, okay. You know, and Baltimore stuff stood out. And if I scroll 20, he's in like eight. Okay. And this was every day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, who is this guy? He's dancing, doing all, all the goofy stuff he does. And then one day he says, uh, coming soon, Baltimore Bond movie. Bond. And then I saw so I'm like, well, shit, let me send him a message. I want to be in it. And he saw my name, King of B-more. He's like, oh, well, you got to be in it. That's how we... We so connected. The connection, right, right. Yeah. So I'm like going out to just watch and just hang out. Maybe I'll, you know, carry some stuff, whatever. And then they go, hey, we we got a scene. You you want to be in it? I was like, yeah. yeah. But to be honest, I was terrified. But I'm like, shit, what I got to lose? You know what I mean? And the, the, the problem is I find everything funny. That's the hard part. Everything is funny. So, but luckily it's tape. So they can delete it or whatever. <laughs> but everything is funny to me, man. But um, um, but anyway, you you're gonna have fun, man. And, and Rock, you said you do not want to be in it, right? Nah, that's just not my my um expertise. Well, you you know what? Do you can you create beats? I can. Well, we can talk soundtrack. Yes. All right, because because I'm getting on the soundtrack. I'm serious. Serious, man. And I, I would try, I tried to get on this one. I ain't having no time. But I'm like, all right, I'll tell you about it later because I got an idea for a song. And I, and I talked to this other dude, but I got two songs I'm going to put in. They'll do it because okay. nobody's singing like me. You got them young boys that, uh, that, I, I can't lie. They sound good. They're, they're really good. But, um, I got something for them. You know, West Virginia in two weeks to be a judge in a Western with Dean Kane? Get out of here. Wow. That's really good. Superman. All right. I, 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 that's major. A Western. I'm talking about that. Maybe I need to um drive you over there. I, Dean Kane. That's me. Yeah. Starch. Hey, Trump's Yale. Trump. Starch Trump. Boy. Yale. Dean and Kane. I, I know, I know you think that it's not possible. See, some of us um still have faith and believe. I don't feel as strong about it as I did OBJ, but I would like to see D Hop here. Can you give us some enlightenment on that story and what's currently going on with D Hop? If you give me a second to to get to that. Okay. I mean he's still doing available for agents. Well no well, well, well see the whole method to my madness was to lead to number one which was D Hop and then he hit his landing spot oh, and okay. from there. Right, but my man I'm sorry if forgive me. Soon as he's not eating he 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 fills the floor. But anyway Okay, so he's number one. Let's just, let's just go to D Hop. Well, we stopped. We got to um, Marcus Peters. That's nah, really keep going. What number Marcus one? Marcus Peters is four, right? No, he was five. five. Okay, real quick. Dalton Dalton Risner, offensive guard. I don't. Um, I don't even know what team he's on. Twenty eight. Does that sound familiar to you at all? No, but he's not on a team. He's a free agent. Right. Uh, Jadavion Clowney, number three. He's gonna have a hard time finding. He's gonna have a hard time finding the team. Ngakwe. Ngakwe. <sighs> He may find it. He may find a job before Clowney as a backup or as a starter. As a starter, okay. As a rotation. You think got way before Clowney? So Clowney, number one pick in the NFL. I know here we go again. Number one pick <laughs> in the NFL. Highly touted coming out of college, play for South Carolina. Hmm. But 
Clowney has burned bridges wherever he's been, right? So he was drafted by the Texans, didn't live up to expectations, stayed hurt. He was supposed to be with him and Wyman. Right. Right. Um, But, like, he basically quit on the Cleveland Browns last year. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that that speaks volumes to the teams. Now, if he had – I mean, if his his production had lived up to his talent, they overlook it. But his production, like I said, he's explosive. He's he puts more pressure on on quarterbacks than most players. But he doesn't get home to get the sacks. Ah. So and then you throw in the attitude issue and the not living up to potential issue. I think uh, I would not be surprised if Ngakwe didn't get a job before. Okay, clowning. Well, Ngakwe, you said. Wait a minute, you said Ngakwe would or would not be for Clowney? Would be for Clowney. Okay. I would not be surprised. Ngakwe, though, man, I know with us, I don't know. He just, my boy uh, was a Minnesota fan. He was like, it's like he he did not want Ngakwe to leave. Right. He's like, man, you just take the Super Bowl. They just say he was, he was so yeah, and I wanted us to get him. I was really disappointed in his production. But then he came midway through the season, and he did not do what Brokhan Smith did when he got here. Exactly. Yeah. It seemed like he was suppo- he, he was he, going he could have right, and that was his third team in one year, right? So he was he was he was with uh, Minnesota. They traded him to where the Colts? No, they traded him somewhere, and we got him from that trade. Um, I can't remember, but since then he's been with the Colts. He's been with the Raiders. Um, he's just not, you know, and he's getting to that point now where the younger, faster, stronger guys coming in under him. So yeah, top four, top four linebackers of all times for the Ravens. Wait, man, where you going? I just want to ask a question before because we're gonna forget about it when we gonna start talking about D Hops. And I'm asking for a reason because y'all was talking about Ngakwe, I, I, and I think um, play D N. Yes. So top four linebackers are easy. Of course, it's Ray, um, <clears throat> C.J. Mosley. Um, um, now you got Roquan, and I think Roquan pushed Peter Bulwer out and then Suggs. But not in that order. Suggs, to me, would be right behind Ray. So so with us having someone like Ngakwe, we couldn't slide him. He's getting older. You know what I mean? They're not going to bring him back. So you don't think a change of position will help? No, they're not going to bring it back. I mean, coming from playing with your hand in the dirt and playing standing up, it doesn't sound hard, but it's a very hard transition. So that's why Suggs was so unique. Suggs is one of the few people that could do it consistently. In the NFL, not just in for the team, but in the NFL, Suggs is one of the few people who can stand up and put his hand in the dirt and be just as effective and scary. Mm. Play the run and play the pass. So why you like to see Ngakwe come back? See what happened with Ojobu, uh, Ojabu. They've been saying this kid is back to form, and I didn't follow Michigan. People know, no, I don't like Michigan football. But if he's half as what they expect him to be, I don't see. I don't. I I would question them even bringing back Justin Houston. Quick, quick. Update: O Strand Runner on third, going into the top of the ninth. Is it still eight? What would you say, eight to five? What was it? Tell me the score again, Bob, please. And we're going to the top of the, and tell me who's uh, who's coming in the pitch. It's home, and it's the top of the ninth. Yeah, that means we get three outs, we win. Right, but no, um, we're at bat. No, 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 no. We're bad. no we're we bad. stranded a runner. Now we're going into the top. So the top at the, the bottom of the eighth, we stranded. Okay, it's still eight to five. And tell me it's Cano or uh Batista, then I'm feeling like we can we can wrap this up. Although they it they kind of fell apart. All right. Who you wow, who you think the top four before I go to D Hop? Who's your top four? Um Lock- Ray. Um Roquan. Definitely Suggs. I mean, we it, we've had some pretty um pretty decent role players from, from Bart um to the, the Hotwell. You know, we we've had. They may not been um, like outstanding on their own, mm-hmm. but they were great role players. Mm-hmm. I think if they weren't as good as they was, we wouldn't be talking about Ray as much as we did. Hmm. Ray had a, a nose guard in front of him, but he also had some supporting linebackers as well. I I, I say Ray Ray was great. Um, 
before he needed someone in front of him. I think by the time they needed to have a nada in front of him, Ray had already reached the mountaintop and was was at that level and staying that level. He was he was he was was it his physicality or speed that made him? It was both because he was fast. It was his it was and he initially his his speed and then his just just his understanding of the game, his overall knowledge of and film study, what was going to happen, uh, epitomized by that play in San Diego where um, it was fourth and one and they needed the first down um, in order to kick the field goal to win the game. And Ray shot the gap and and and, and uh, tackled the, the running back four yards deep in the, in, in the backfield and ended that game. You said San Diego? Is yeah. that the game? Yeah. Um, there's a dude who could run, too. Um, he was sneaky. I can't he was, think of it. Was, was, a small, was it Sprout? Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's, it's not Sprout. Not his last name, but Sproles. Sproles. Sproles, yes, yes, yes. Bob says Ray was the master of the half tackle, or as we called it growing up in the city, king of the pot. Oh, what? You made it. <laughs> Man, I should have read it first. <laughs> tell, tell that, tell that to uh, Bam Mars. Tell that to to uh, to um, Rashad Mendenhall. Tell that to Le'Veon Bell. Tell that to to yeah, a lot of players who think Ray. <laughs> All the bullies. We saw thirtieth for them, right? Yeah. Who was yeah. who was oh, what was his name? Oh my god. Um it's round tip my tongue. They went and said I quit. I ain't gonna hang out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Corey Dillon, he made Corey Dillon quit. Yeah, yeah. 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 back out there. <laughs> oh man. He's gonna sign a one year one day contract, he but he wants to but he wants to um, get a couple carries also. He Wait, wants preseason. To, I don't know what's going to happen. I saw that he wanted to. He asked the Steelers to let him do it. I don't know what's going to happen. Bob says, he was a beast, but if you did not, if you deny what I said, you'd be lying. You're talking about at the end. Of the, but either way, if you pile on, you pile on. That's part of tackling. If he ain't down, if, I need my entire defense doing that. Was, so it, the, the Buffalo, was it the Buffalo game where um, Ray needed – Ray knew we needed a turnover to win the game, and he had everybody stand up the runner or the receiver, and then he came in and popped him and made him cough up the ball. <laughs> that's not piling on. That's smart. Because Ray told him before, y'all just hold him up till I get there. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen anything like that. So back in the day, back in the 80s, when University of Miami was becoming the University of Miami and they were scaring everybody and wouldn't play him, there was a player who never made the NFL uh, he was he was he was a linebacker for um, for Miami, and they were playing a game against Oklahoma. It was a big national televised game. Oklahoma, I think, was ranked number one. Miami was ranked number three. And they talk about it in the um, the U, the the documentary, your third for thirty about the U. And the dude said, for the right for the kickoff, he tells the rest of the team, "I'm going down on the kickoff, and I'm gonna knock somebody out." And they were like, yeah, man, knock him out. He was like, no, I'm, I'm knocking somebody out. He's going unconscious. And they were like, what? He was like, yeah, well, I'm going to hit this one, and he's going to be knocked out. And they kick off the ball, and he goes downfield and knocks the man completely out, wow. unconscious. <laughs> like, I told you. Like, who? this is who we are. This is how we play. Right? <laughs> and I've seen some remarkable stuff in, in, in football. That and, and when... Rocky Ishmael called a kickoff, a punt return for a touchdown before the before the play happened, and and Lou Holtz was the quarterback, was the coach, and he was yelling at him to do something, and Rocket Ishmael looked at him and, and and waved him off and said, "I got this," and then ran it back for a touchdown that would have won the game, but there was a phantom holding play they called against on the mm. that game. But yeah, this is so this is remarkable people. And Raven Lewis was a remarkable player. Mm. He ain't my favorite Raven, but he was a remarkable player. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite? Reed? Reed. I Reed, Reed is mine. Reed and Suggs. Reed, Reed. They're, they're my trio. Yeah. And and Lamar is, is an honorary mention. Lamar's my favorite this year. You know what I mean? It was it was Ray when Ray left, and it was Suggs. It, 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 Suggs is a character, man. I like Suggs a lot. And then with Suggs, I I, I like uh, Ingram. 
Mark Ingram, man, was like his his he reminds me of me. And he was just out there having fun. And I just, I just I like Ingram. But so um, Lamar's my favorite Raven offensive player. Um but then he's the, the, the Flacco is up there too. Okay. All right. Well, let me give y'all this last round. As we know, D Hop is the number one free agent left. This came from Nick Shook. Where, where, where? I guess it's probably Nick Shook is. Um, yeah, I think he is. He CBS or is he for? Um, Alf, it doesn't matter. That's just yeah. Alf, you, because I, I'm like I was scrolling through his top because I on my on my right now on if I click certain things when I go to Yahoo. It would just light up a bunch of things. So always oh, win game over. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, wait a minute. I gotta change the flag. Keep it, keep the flag, keep the flag. Let me find my old dream sign. Orioles won. That's all I need to know. Now they can win tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I got to post that later, too. So now they win tomorrow, and then they can win the series. I accept that. All right, he, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Top seven landing spots. We'll see what happens. Go from seven first, please. Number seven. Rock's favorite team, Dallas oh, Cowboys. I, I see that happening. But Dallas just signed Brandon Cooks, traded for Brandon Cooks, so maybe not. The Hobby gonna go there because he ain't got nobody to get him the ball. Uh, Prescott, 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 a bum. Prescott had a bad year last year because they were throwing the ball too much. And I, as much as everyone wants to give Mike McCarthy grief about it, he had a point. It's a point where you get up, just like old San Diego Chargers back when they had Dan Fouts. You can score too much and score too quickly. Your defense doesn't get a chance to rest and do anything. So you can put up 40 points. But if the other team puts up 42, what the hell? And when you're up by 10 with four minutes to go in the fourth quarter and you're still throwing the ball, that's stupid football. That's just stupid football. And so Dak, Dak's a good quarterback. But, again, D-Hop going there is the same. I don't put it past Jerry Jones, but it's the same thing of him coming here. Because who's next? Uh, and Bob Bob says he's got to be button off, so I guess he's listening since we won. What's up, Bob? <laughs> Number six, and I remember him writing, yeah, I said it. He said in Houston, Texas. That doesn't seem likely to me, but but uh, he's got Houston, Texas. Oh, and by the way, he said Cowboys got ten point six million. Uh so that's enough room to kind of do we something. Well, huh? We got twelve. That's true. However, the Panthers, they got twenty seven. It ain't about the money. It ain't the about the money. Said, the man he said wants he to wants, win. He wants to go to a place with a quarterback he can respect that'll put a team on his back and rise, raise all boats, not just a quarterback who's focused on making himself better. And that was a direct dig at Colomer. I agree with that 100%. So who's the quarterback in, in, in Houston? Oh, they drafted a rookie. He ain't ready. Oh, who's the quarterback at Carolina? At Carolina. Then they, oh, they just drafted. They drafted. They drafted. But the you don't. Right. You don't think a bunch of money could could no. persuade him? No. Why at this that? point in his career? Because no. he wants to ring. Right. He, wants to rank. he wants to be in a winning, a winning organization. He was not in a winning organization in Houston. He was not in a winning organization. They, they were on their way, and then and then they got rid of. Him. To me, Houston well, was, yeah, was on their way. Ryan was was the head coach and GM, and he screwed up that team. And yeah. So, and because and and not too bad, Wink's not on the floor. He he's at New England now, right? Back in so New England was was like on the radar, and I'm like, I don't think he wants to go back and look at that dude. So that's why New England isn't even on this list. So the first three: Cowboys, Texans, Panthers. Cowboys probably the be best choice of those three. three. Yeah, Cowboys definitely. All right, number four, right in the middle is the Baltimore Ravens. Again. Y'all know my feel. Oh, I could be wrong, but I know my, I, that, that's what I feel from following the team. What he wrote, what, and, I, and I didn't write it all out, but what he wrote, he basically feels like you as far as it, the amount of people that we have on the team. But he ended with saying, however, I've seen other, I've seen things happen yeah. before. Yeah, it's, uh, however. And I give it to however. But. Yeah, he said, I've seen things happen before, and, they, and the Ravens are built to win. 
So that was kind of how he ended it. But he was, but out of his four, I don't remember his Texans reason. But uh, you gonna make me go back and check that out because well, I Texans reason what I said the yeah. quarterback situation. Now between now you're D hop. So between Ravens and Cowboys, just just you as D hop, not not thinking of the player, just thinking who who you if you're thinking ring. Who do you think has a better chance between those two teams? But you know, that's a good question, and it's a funny question because players always go, Cowboys have got a chance to win, and they never win. But players always go, oh, the Cowboys, and they, they go there. So I can see him saying, oh, the Cowboys. Okay. Well, we, we know. Not me. We know. But now here's something that's interesting, and Shannon Sharp made me think of this. The Lions are next. No. Detroit, no. no. Lions, the Lions. The situation is Yep, to a degree. They improved a lot. But, again, that quarterback is Jared Goff. And Jared Goff, he's not a quarterback that's going to throw a team on his back and make everybody better. And, and that, he's just not that quarterback. He's a good quarterback. He's a Flacco-type quarterback. Okay. What I'm looking at, though, the, what I'm looking at is, and I'm not saying that D-Hop can't do it because D-Hop can be – that player, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. in the locker room. But for him to go to those other teams, he has to change the dynamic there. For him to come to us, it's just a matter of falling into the fold and everybody doing what they do. And even early on in the season when everybody thought we was going to get him instead of OBJ, everybody was saying, man, what if we can get both of them when we thought we was going to get D-Hop? But when we got OBJ, they was like, oh, we're going to have the money or the space for, for D-Hop. But now we do. We have the money. And I think that the maturity in that locker room, D-Hop can come there. OBJ knows he's not going to be there for the long haul. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the two of them on the same team, one at the most two years, is not a bad thing. Because when OBJ leaves, we still has D-Hop in that position along with the young guys that we're bringing up. So you have that leadership, you have that talent still on the team. And I think, you know, like, uh, what's the name saying? EC will go get him. Let me show a question. Hypothetically, okay. Let's say D-Hop comes to the Ravens. Yes. Okay. And for what, however it works out, Ravens get a Super Bowl. Okay. Let's let's say they win. Or let's just say it's an extremely successful year, Super Bowl or not. But let's just say it's a deep playoff run. But you know what? I'm just going to say it. Fuck it. Super Bowl. Let's say they win a Super Bowl. Now, if you, okay, to make this, if you if you do sign, if if they were to sign D-Hop to for my scenario, I don't, would he come here for one year? Yes. Possibly. Okay. Because the second year, he can get the big contract. Do you give me a lot Come on, let me ask my question though. So, okay, let's give them both one year, mm-hmm. right? We win. What do you do the following year? Let OBJ retire. He ain't gonna retire, but I he would. But because he, he got two rings, he got all the money that he want. You know what I mean? But he, you know he's he's a baller though, man. And he and he didn't and he's been injured. I think he would still want to play some more. But he, but but you would say, don't worry about him. Try to sign D Hop to, yes. to some more time. What would you do? I would sign D-Hop to a two-year contract. If you were to sign him this year or? Yeah, I'd sign him this year. So okay. a two-year contract, you can spread the money out. See, when you don't, when it's a one-year contract, all that money is on the salary cap. You can't push it. It's all that money. Okay. So if we got 12, if we want to give him a matching contract of $15 million, that to be seven and and seven. Right, it had to be a big signing bonus in seven and seven to spread it out to make it work. Okay. But but that okay. But I'm taking my feelings out of that one. So uh, yeah, just 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 like yeah. because yeah, you know your scenario. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you know, I, as soon as we figure out, as soon as I find out what happens with Peters and whatever the defense is doing, that's that's my my question mark side right now is the defense. And well, it's not even the whole defense; it's just at the corner position. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's more and maybe a pass rusher. Right. So we still, so we still need once once we solidify, like once I just know what we got because I feel good about the middle. I feel good about Queen. 
And uh, of course, Roquan is not an issue. And of course, we're assuming everybody's healthy. You got, I'm just going with that. I I feel better about Hamilton. I felt better the first half Hamilton. The first three weeks, I didn't know what we were doing, man. I didn't know what was going on. And I feel so much better about him now. Um, and I feel like he can only, he can only get better. I, I just I, I I was I was happy with his improvement. Since we're speaking about health, and we got. Um... Our Ravens thesaurus in the building with us. Yeah, do you remember um, when Lamar got food poisoned or something and they say he got it from the little ladies' restaurant on Emerson Avenue? No, I remember when he ran to the bathroom, ran to the locker room, and they were saying he had food poisoning and he said it was a cramp. But I don't remember where it's seeing where it came from. I'm going to try to Google it so I can make sure so I send it to Troy. He, he ate like some rice pudding or something from the lady that, that she was known for. And it, it supposedly made him sick. Kimmy's on Emerson? It wasn't Kimmy's on Emerson Avenue. It was this little spot right there on Emerson Avenue on Franklin Town Road. Oh, in the cut? Yeah. No, nah, I've never eaten there. I wouldn't. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to find it. Who's Lamar going in the cut anywhere, man? Come on, man. He was hanging out with Hollywood. He, he, he went they to the were, restaurant. They were riding scooters through downtown, so it's possible. But I don't think he went to the actual restaurant. I think somebody, um, brought, the somebody brought the food from their front. I'm going to find it. Dang. Okay. Number two. Chiefs. That's they don't have that much money. They, they got less than a million. So they can't get him, can they? They can make something happen. I can see him there before I can see him here. But so you know the story, right? So D Hop was on. The Chiefs were trying to trade for him, mm -hmm. and they were one of the two teams that were actively working with Arizona to make the trade. Mm -hmm. We signed OBJ for the money that we signed him for, and the Chiefs. I'm sorry, uh, the Cardinals were like, hey, yeah, then we can get some compensation too and the money. And the Chiefs said, no, nah, we're not going to do it. And Buffalo did the same thing. And I know Buffalo's number one on that list. That's right. So do I read y'all the story now or what y'all want to finish? Go, go ahead. It says, got to get the ads out of the way. Hold on. Mm, mm, mm. When, and, when, and what was the source? Yes. One more son. Mike Preston? Um, Your boy. World Warborn? Never heard of him. He's a comedian. Used to be on uh never mind. <laughs> That's not him. Warborn Nobles. Okay, what's the story? I'm trying to it, the ads keep popping up. Mm -hmm. The the name of the restaurant was Miss Um Shirley's. No, it wasn't Shirley's. <laughs> they got bread pudding now? Everything else over there is good. <laughs> you got free sweat. Keep locked up. You got there free you sweat go. on your shirt. A Hennessy issue? Nah. Going into the Ravens' Week 11 game against the Bears, it was assumed that Lamar Jackson would be able to play for Baltimore. Jackson has missed Wednesday and Thursday practices as a result of an illness. He returned to practice on Friday in full in full participation designation. Oh, last year? Yes. Seemed to indicate that he was healthy and ready to play. Jackson even told reporters after practice that he was feeling great and noted that his sickness wasn't a big deal. I usually don't get sick for real, Jackson said, after Friday's practice per ESPN. He said, I used to eat my Flintstone vitamins when I was a kid. My immune system should be good. Um, then it said, however, things changed rapidly for Jackson on Saturday. He had a relapse in his illness and was deemed 50 50 for the game. He ended up sitting out because of the May, May, Malady, May, Malady. Ma Malady. Okay, sorry, please forgive me. No problem. Tyler Huntley started in place of Jackson and led the Ravens to a 16 13 win over the Bears. What was the sickness that kept Jackson out of the game? Here's everything to know about Jackson's illness and how he's feeling one week after the first missed contest of the season. And then it says he's planning to, to play again, then feeling good. Uh, the stage when he's practice is obviously expecting Jackson. 
included chills, nice sweats, and general fatigue. Hair no cold, prayer, Jackson. Well, I got fatigue. Was the uh, Jackson has dealt with uh, and normal. I'm trying to skip to the part where they talk about the restaurant. Some of us have no clue. <laughs> We're going to be patient. Yes. It's all right, baby. <laughs> I'm trying. The, these ads, um, it, it keeps popping up. How do I, I stop the listening from? Well, Face I, of money. I, look, I believe it was food poisoning. I, I thought you were talking about years ago, two years ago, when he had, when he ran to this. Uh, no, not when he was in the game. He never even made it to the game. Yeah, I remember food poisoning. I, I never heard where it came from. But I do believe it was food poisoning. Why are you looking for that, Troy? The, I found the criteria that the guy used. Oh, okay. Um, it's for the running backs, right? For uh, the running run. explosive yeah. runners, right? Um, he says explosive score takes into account each player's top speed, average speed, number of big plays, and more to produce a composite score on a scale of zero to one hundred. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you see? Here comes the boom. Bob says Lamar had some of that applesauce that Kevin James had. And here comes the boom makes me nervous anyway. I don't even I don't even want to know what the boom is. Here comes the boom. All I can think of is is uh I was gonna say switch, not switch. Um switch, switch, switch. That's no, that's a Will Smith song. What's the Will Smith movie? Oh itch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Itch and Mall Cop. <laughs> And that's basically um, Kevin James's. Yeah, movie. and then Kings of Queen. Yeah. And, and, and Grown Ups. I'm sorry, what was, I'm sorry, re, could you read that one more time for me? So the criteria is um, explosive score takes into account each player's top speed, average speed, number of big plays and more, average number of big plays and more to produce a composite score on a scale of 0 to 100. Hmm. Um, so what's the key is what's considered a big play. Yep. That would be the key. Right. Now, he said in 2021, he used a set of requirements that included two benchmarks, two benchmarks, a minimum of 100 carries and a minimum of 20 carries in which a runner gained 10 or more yards and relied on the total number and percentage of 15 minus plus miles per hour sorts of runs to sort out qualified runners. See, you start doing that, you're doing too much. And I I, I just, I, I question it. And it's Nick Shook. You're right. It's Nick Shook. Mm -hmm. And he's a, Nick Shook is a, is a, um, a fantasy football guy. Okay. That's a whole different world of, yeah. I have argued and I didn't realize I was arguing with, to argue with fantasy football people is totally, that was a problem I when I used to argue with people about Flacco. Uh -huh. And I'm arguing with fantasy football players. And I'm like, so Flacco ain't shit for fantasy football. Right. But if you want to count real football. Them W's. Right. Them you want to count wins. That's, that's, so yeah, you'll always get, um, what's his name, before he went to the Rams. Um, when he was in Detroit, he was always putting up crazy numbers. Oh, yeah. But they weren't winning. Right. Um, you are, you know, you can always, you know, throw for a bunch of yards and whatever. That's great for fantasy. Right. But when it comes to winning, and one of my closest friends, uh the last the the year the year I stopped doing fantasy football, he asked me to get in the fantasy football league with him. And I told him no. And he said that he ended up ended up with Lamar as his quarterback. This was Lamar's first year starting. And we laughed. He wasn't happy about it? We laughed because we're like, hey, I know you're not starting. It was like, no, I'm not going to start him. Because oh. fantasy football projected him as a bad passer and only running the ball. And that first week, they put up 50 points against Miami, and he had 300 and some yards passing and 100 and some yards running. And we were all like, oh, wait. Right? Mm -hmm. But 
all in all, if you compare them, Michael Vick was not a good fantasy football pick because he ran more than he threw. Mm. So, but if yeah. he, but if you run and you get the touchdowns, I, I, we had this discussion, or maybe I didn't have it here. I'm gonna always be. If I don't know a fantasy football league, it has to be for free. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to put up money, and I'm gonna be terrible because I, I'm not picking anybody from Steelers because I need to be able to root for my team and in real life. And that's what stopped me from. I, mean, I, I got out of it not only because a lot of my friends who were in it with me passed away, but it was, it was distracting. Right, I'm watching the game. And I'm trying to see what Darren Sproles ran for because I got to start him. And and I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to what our players are doing. And I'm, I'm like I'm watching the, I'm at the game watching the game on my phone. And I I done paid big money to go to a game. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm home watching the game an away game, I got all the fantasy scores on the screen, and I got my my laptop up here running stuff. And I'm like. Oh, what a great play. Like, oh, shit, I got to wait for the replay. They're going to replay it. Oh, in San Francisco, so and so. Like, and like, I can't. I can't. It's, just... it's like I never, when I was in it, um, by the way, Bob says, Here Come the Boom is one of my top ten sports movies. Kevin James. Okay, this is kind of funny. Kevin James is a school teacher who joins MMA to save the music department. Oh, that's right. That sounds funny right there. And if I didn't pick the Steelers, I would have won. If I didn't pick the Steelers, I would have won Fantasy. I have the article if y'all want me to read. Okay, I'm, I'm curious about you, bro. All right, it says, Woman accused of poisoning Raven star Lamar Jackson. Woman accused of poisoning Raven star Lamar Jackson. A woman was accused of poisoning Raven star Lamar Jackson prior to the Baltimore season ending 28-12 loss this weekend. Heading into the divisional round, game between Jackson's group and the Tennessee Titans, few people gave the latter squad much of a shot. The Ravens were simply too offensively talented, the experts insisted experts insisted. When they proved to be untrue, when that proved to be untrue, folks scrambled for someone to blame for the Ravens' embarrassing defeat. That someone ended up being a restaurant owner who posed alongside Jackson in an Instagram photo that later went viral. Shortly after Baltimore's collapse, Trolls begins to harass Sia Carter of Miss Carter's Kitchen and accusing her of poisoning Jackson before the outing. Had to be something in that chicken that gave my quarterback one user posted. He was out there cramping in, in the stomach while you, while you do it. There's absolutely zero evidence that Jackson was cramping or in any way negatively impacted by the food during Saturday game, but they did not stop some fans from going nuts. So, are, are they say is the outcome that he was poisoned? They were they just saying he was sick, but they trying to say it came from her banana pudding. Uh. And so you believe it? No, I don't. But I, that's why I was asking about, you know what I mean? The, because me and you had, had mentioned you like you never heard of it. I haven't heard it. Yeah, it was like a big deal, man. Like it got to the point where people were showing up inside our rest, outside our restaurant and everything. That's the problem with Baltimore fans. They take stuff way, way, way. And it's not just Baltimore fans. It's people all over the world. They <laughs> take stuff way too seriously. End of the day, it's a game. The man did not... The woman didn't poison them on purpose. Right. <laughs> you know, just don't eat at a restaurant. If you don't think it's safe. Uh, but it had to be something in the chicken. That was the main line. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just when we were talking about um, players and, and things like that, y'all have more um, football history knowledge than I do. Give me the whole story on William Refrigerator Pry on what it was that made him the star that he was. And how did the NFL just let him fall victim to to what what it was in me? He when he died, he died broke. He died. Was he an he ass addict? He, I think William Price is dead. He was living in North Carolina or something. I didn't know he was dead. I can Google it to be sure, but I thought you know he was having a problem from diabetes. They said it was some drug use or something. I mean, it was bad. 
Um, can y'all give me some insight on William Perry, though? Because that was one of my favorite football players. My whole time in high school, I had to wear seven. So the fridge played at Clemson, I believe. <laughs> uh, Bob says he heard. This is Lamar. Not, not He said he heard he had brisket before the kickoff. Really, Bob? <laughs> really? I heard it was armadillo eggs. <laughs> That's a wing. That's a wing. wing. That's a wing. <laughs> oh, 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 so that armadillo oh, was spicy. So, it was, so with Bob, it was it was clearly the, um, the chowder, the clam chowder that he got. That's wing too. That's wing also. The, the Patriots. Oh, so Bob. Now Bob is a, on a sly. He's a he's he's a Ravens fan, but he does like the, uh, New Orleans. No, who is it? Louisiana. Oh, um, what's the school? LSU. LSU. Yeah. So yeah. It was just a rumor that William Perry died. It it was found that it was it's just a rumor. Yeah. I Social media that. rumor. Rock is pulling out some so 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 I think if I'm not mistaken, he went to Clemson. Um drafted in the first round by the Bears. He came in overweight. Um Buddy Ryan was the defensive coordinator and did not like the draft pick, did not want them to draft him. Uh, he was forced on Buddy Ryan by the Bears management, and uh, Buddy Ryan didn't want him to play. Wouldn't let him. Wouldn't let him start. Wanted him to get in better shape. Um, the Bears defensive line was so dominant and so great back then that um, they really did not need him. Right. So it wasn't like we need this as our, our as our uh, you know missing piece to get where we need to go. So, but he was he was so big, and they just used him on short yardage for a while. And since he wasn't being used as much on defense, uh, uh, the coach Ditka was mad that he wasn't being used. And after they lost the game to San Francisco, where um, I think it was a year before, actually they lost the game to San Francisco, where. Um, San Francisco used an offensive lineman in the backfield as a blocker um, to clear the way for for their running back to to, to score a touchdown. Dicker was like, "We got this big kid we drafted, and he's not getting any playing time on defense. Hell, I'll use him on offense." And started using him as a lead blocker for for um, Walter, Walter Payton. Payton, and not only on short yardage but in critical yardage. And he would just run into people. He didn't know the plays. He would just run basically with his eyes closed into the line. But that created a legend. And the NFL uh, writers and, and everybody picked up on it. And he, you know, the more he played on offense, um, the more he got notoriety, right? So he became almost like a punchline. But he was so big and got the notoriety that Buddy Ryan was forced to use him on defense. So then he's a two-way player. But he was mainly used. He got his notoriety from playing offense. Um, so uh, that year, when they won the Super Bowl, when they destroyed New England, uh, when Raymond Berry, former Colt, was the coach, and and the Bears defense just destroyed everybody. Uh, uh, the the fridge, and that was his nickname. They called him the fridge because he was big as a refrigerator even though the Bears' nickname for him was Biscuit, because he said he was a biscuit away from being overweight. Um, that made them start using him on defense more. And he had like he had a very short career because he just he kept eating himself out of shape and out of the league. But his younger brother ended up being all pro, uh, a hell of a defensive lineman for, for several years. But that's, no one let him go. He was his own worst enemy. Okay. Sort of like Nate Newton. But Nate Newton, I think, pulled himself together recently in the last five years or so. Wow. Hmm. That's why Yale, listen, he's out, he met the Saurus. When you come to, to, to <laughs> I lived all that, man. I lived all that. When he was at Clemson, one thing, okay, so here's the thing the fridge could stand next to a table, it had to be a strong table. But he could stand next to a table and do a standing jump on top of the table. Feet planted, wow. not getting a running start, just squat and jump and could jump up on the table. Now you see people doing it as an exercise, like a conditioning exercise where they jump up on these stacks of, of platforms. 
But at his weight, which at the time, I think he was like 320, which ain't big today. Right? No, it's, isn't that weird? Yeah, right. And fat, and people running under five now at that weight. Patrick Ricard is 310. Is he? Patrick Ricard. That's all is he. Like, oh, you're right. You're right. He's 310 and he's built like a brick house. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's, he's built great. better than Perry. Yeah, he's, he's tighter. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's built better than some defensive linemen we got. Like, he's be- built better than. Is he supposed to be on defense? He started out, he was drafted as a defensive lineman. Yeah. But he had played fullback in college and they said, you know, hey, we need a fullback. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Um, but yeah, so look, I remember when the Colts had a guy. They drafted out of Arizona State. Um, he weighed 345. They called him quarter to four. He was way too big for when the Colts had Frank Cush as the head coach and said he, they cut him. He couldn't get his weight under 345, and they called him quarter to four. Um, but now you got, I mean, you got players now, man, 344, 345. They talking about you need to put on a little more weight. <laughs> you know, you're going to be an offense. Ogden was 360. They listed him as 345, but Ogden was 360. He's a, he's a, I, I finally stood next to him, um, and I was like, he's – I mean, he looked big on the field, but you don't know what big is until you until you stand in next. So it was the same way when I'm – when, you, when you're around other big players and somebody's just a little bigger, that's a big difference. Like um, like a basketball players is the first example. I, I saw Patrick Ewing, and I'm like – Jesus, yeah. he's like a creature. Like, it's, it's like because, but on the floor, you, and when you if you go to a basketball game, then everybody. I mean, even even though they're all the same size, when I'm there live, they still look linkyish to me. But when you stand, when you take all the players away, and I was standing at the next to Patrick with the Wizards in a suit, and he still, it was like people find this, and you know, I'm like, I, you know. I'm like women like this, you know what I mean? The height or whatever, but and granted, he wasn't the most beautiful, but I always remember him missing that dunk layup. Yeah, thing. So <laughs> you know, it, when speaking of the the Hoyas back then, Hoyas. Yeah. I'm sorry. Re, remember when they had uh, they had a player who was point guard, Michael Jackson, and he was like, he's so little out there playing with those big guys, and Michael Jackson was six <laughs> two. <laughs> so how tall was Iverson? About the same? Iverson, I think, is like six foot, six one. Okay. But he looked like he four feet seven. He's just so much smaller. Yeah. He's going up and he dunked on Shaq and stuff like that. Like, what the hell? But when you see him on television, like you said, like, oh, these like little guys. Yeah. And then you meet him in public, like, goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the dude they used to guard him. Um, they used to guard Iverson when he was on the Wizards. And then he... He, oh my God, John Wall? No, John Wall's recent. No, okay, he was a coach. He used to, then he used to have the, the braids. He used to have his hair braided back. Real lights can do. Um, oh, Lou? Yes. Teron Lou yeah. was way taller, and I and I'll put a picture of him. He's like he's a little guy, also. Teron yeah. Lou looks like he's. I got a picture next to him in the in the uh, arena or Capital Center, whatever it was. Not Capital. What was it? Where was it? NCI Center? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right center, yeah. I got a picture, and I am on a step, and he's on a step below me, and he's still taller than me. <laughs> and, I, and I'm sitting there going, although in the picture you can't see the steps, right? but it's just because I'm to the right, and if you've been there, you're like, uh, Troy, how tall are you? Like, what? <laughs> right, and I, I'm, I'm much shorter than you and smaller than you, but you know, that picture I have of me meeting Ray Lewis to sign his auto, get his autograph signed in that book. He's sitting down. I'm standing up, and he and Ray Lewis was considered a small linebacker. He, yeah, and he's, he's not as tall as uh, he's 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 thick. He's yeah, really high. yeah. And like when I so who was making the comment? One of you two making the comment when I posted the pictures of when uh, they broke on. You're like that's a little guy. Yeah, but he, I'm standing up and he's sitting down. Yeah, but he's still not as big as as Ray was. Oh no! Oh no! He mm-hmm. reminds me of my cousin. That's like. Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I just thought it was a friend of yours. That, like, was it some guy that we, we used to bowl with or something? I had no idea who that was. If you, like, if you didn't tell me that, I had to go, then I had to go Google, like, this motherfucker lying to me. <laughs> oh, damn. It's, it's like, you know how you see players, like, 
the only players that I would know just like that, seems like all of them, but certainly like Ray Flacco, Ray Rice, Suggs, Ed Reed. Reed. Right. All of those guys I saw all the time. Roquan, I, I, I had to I had to really look at. But you don't even mm-hmm. been pay attention for half a season. Yeah. And when he got here, he still had the hair. Yes. And that's he right. cut his hair off. And I even told him when I when I approached him, I was like, I thought it was you, but to be honest, since you cut the hair, I wasn't sure. So I gave you space till I figured it out. Like, I don't know who you are. And he was like, Oh, thank you. I was like, Yeah, man. So yeah. It's it's funny. It's not like you know basketball players. You see their face all the time. Even baseball, they were the Orioles did a thing with Adley Rushman where he was he was when they came out with the new jerseys. So they made it look like he and uh, he was working in the uh, store, mm-hmm. the Orioles store, and he was trying to tell people to buy stuff or whatever. And I'm sitting there going, "How did they not know who he is?" But why would you be thinking this? And he looks like he's 16. Right. Sure. So you, you'd you be sitting there going, um, I guess you wouldn't be thinking, why would Adley Rushman be? You know, Cedric Mullins couldn't get away with that. Right. Oh, and um, Rushman is what? This is his first year. In his his second. Second year. Right. They brought so, up last year. Midway last yes. year, right? Yeah. So a lot of people don't. Like, he's not a Ripken. We all Yo, they, they show his face all the time. But I'm sitting there looking at him like there's no disguise. But he does, like, I would probably sit there and go, probably on thought would probably go, man, he looks like, and probably keep shopping over there. Mm-hmm. But if he's, if he's, I don't know, man. It just looks so obvious and it just looks crazy. And one guy recognized me. He's like, and they had the camera on. He's like, yeah, Ellie Rushman. He's like, what? You, you, you need to pull that up, man. And then he's like, so he try not to give anything. He's like trying to get a, and they're recording everything. So I guess if you see cameras, but they, you probably could see him. I guess they were. That's like my whole premise about uh, Undercover Boss. Right. <laughs> Right, look, right. You're a new employee that they just got cameras following around. Yeah. Right. <laughs> My only personal, I did. I, I think I told you I did Pawn Stars. Did I ever tell you that no, story? Yeah. I was an extra in Pawn Stars. They were they were doing something. They were doing Pawn Stars do America. Some so they were doing going all around the country, and they were in D.C. So I signed up or whatever, and I and I got the, the gig of being in the background or whatever. But they said, bring something that you would pawn or whatever. I never watched the show, so I didn't really get it. So you go down there. So the first thing you first thing you do, you go down, and this was everybody's got to get COVID tests. If you don't pass, they take your ass home, whatever. If you pass, okay, because they don't want anybody wearing a mask. Right. So um, we did the COVID test, but this was last year. So we go outside. And it, you get, you get, um, I got, I think I got like, did I get 20 bucks an hour? No. I got like 200 bucks for the day. Okay. And lunch. Lunch, I was like, I'm going to make my money up in lunch, right? Literally, it was at the winer, unwind, winery, um, Oh, City Winery? City, yeah, City yes, Winery? Yeah, it was there. Okay. But I didn't get the, like, I've seen food. I didn't get what I would have ordered. Right. Okay. But it was all right. It was, you know, got me through the day. Like, and I'm going to get 200 in cash. So I get, you know, I'm like, let me find out what it is. But th- that's a nice restaurant. That's a nice yeah, restaurant. Right. to go stuff. see live bands and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I DJ cool. there with Brian Christopher. That's all. Oh, cool. yeah, let me go back down there. Yeah. It was easy to get to right off New York. So we go there and we're walking around and, and, and we got everybody up there. We got to go outside and we're supposed to act like, I'm saying all that to get to the, to the scene report. We go, we go outside and we got to. The limo's got to drive around, and we're supposed to clap as they pull up, but we can't clap till they tell us, right? Uh-huh. And then as they get out, cameras in their way, and then they got to say stuff to the camera as they're talking. So we got to clap, yeah. and then when they get out, stop, uh-huh. right? And I don't know what was going wrong. Then they go, like, then they have to drive around the block again, and we had to do it again. Aren't like, oh, they just backing up? So now we're driving around, and it was shit as I don't know what. And I'm like. Okay, we're clapping again, and each time they're adjusting the line. So by the time they did the last one, I'm standing right there. So now I'm like, oh shit, I'm actually in this one, right? Mm-hmm. So they get out the door, and I took, I brought a microscope, and they're like, you can't bring a bag, but I'm like, well, it's the case, because I ain't gonna carry. It's kind of heavy, so I have, I'm holding up the microscope. We got clap, blah blah blah. So if they kept the last one, I'm in it, right? So here's the thing: when they're walking around and they got all the stuff set up and they got a pawn shop area um and they got tables 
all over the place, right? Like normally you would be eating whatever. So we're supposed to keep moving around. We're not supposed to stop. And we're supposed to be talking and then keep moving, right? Like never just stand still. So I'm sitting there going, who believes this? Like I've never watched the show. Mm -hmm. Who can believe this if you see, you know, I keep walking by, right? There's a bunch same, of them. same. And then if you stay in one spot too long, they'll say something. You got to keep moving. I'm like, oh, because how long you want to keep moving? So I'm like, I've decided I don't want to be in the camera because if I'm not in the camera, I can stand still right, right. and get something to eat and drink because they got like stuff set up all over the place. So I'm like, let me just get a soda. And they kept working their way towards me. But like you say, it's like there are cameras everywhere. Yeah. And you and you 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 have to to be in the background. They don't want you blocking anything. So they got a camera way back here. And I'm like, and then so you do so a lot of times there's a bunch of this. We're <laughs> jumping. You know, I did it at least three or four times because I'm like, but as long as you just keep moving. So to go to what you were saying with bosses, I'm like, how did it's like it's gotta be it's gotta be fake. First of all, unless you're a chain. Like I, I, um, maybe you don't know who the boss is, but if you got two stores, three stores, yeah, yeah, you know, know uh, this, yeah. this ain't gonna save you. Yeah, but I mean, you know, but so Seven Eleven, they, I remember the that's probably one, good. and uh, they didn't know who the guy was, and he was in disguise, whatever. But still, like, <laughs> this is a, a a new hire, and they got all these cameras on him, and he's he's asking me all these questions about my business, and like you said, the cameras are right there. You gotta know. I'm I mean, like the first the first two or three shows, because they do a whole season before they after you know right. it comes on television. Right. So the first two or three shows of the whole series, you didn't know what was going on, but you like I got to but you gotta know. <laughs> Something is special. It's not just this guy that you're training all of a sudden. Like, come on, man. Yeah. It's 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 pretty sad. Fellas, I'm gonna run out because yeah, I have a morning meeting. I am now uh in charge of some stuff at work. Uh I gotta get these grids together. I'm gonna let y'all fight that out. Yeah, you gonna make sure if not, I just have to take them all because he's already had some. Uh I have your free. No, I mean an extra oh, is that extra? What's that? It's, it's, okay. Uh, we get to Luca, go. Luca took some four with it, but there's a pool <laughs> that y'all can split them, wrap them. You on the you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you got the bite, so you. I, I would say wrap in the foil and let him take the pan because he has the van. Oh, and then you can put it in your bag. You can put it in your bag. That way, make sure the wife gets some of the ribs because say it again. the wife, the wife enjoyed the ham. She told me when you had lost your phone, whatever, and she was calling for you. And hold on, I'll let you talk to Rock. But I like your ham. Like, yeah, I know my ham is all that. Oh, wait a minute, Bob. No, Bob. Did I ever see your, your commercial for Procter and Gamble? No. He told a couple of guys he was undercover boss while filming it. <laughs> Send that to me some kind of way so I can. Oh, you can't believe nothing Bob says. <laughs> <laughs> Bob is good. But, no, 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 go ahead. No, I was, was going to say thank you for letting me come in here and, and uh, be your thesaurus in your history. Yo, man, let give me appreciate your info one more time, man. Let me put the camera all on you. Let me, let me give us your info one more time. Because I be smoking. I, exactly. That, and that's, you got to play, you got to play the song. Yeah. Hey, uh, Joe, what's the last song to say I be smoking? No, Choke the metal, boy. I be stroking. Somebody had to slap this. Slap it. I'm just saying, if somebody will buy a commercial WMEG, we can use it. And I, I, I thought I, I thought I sponsored last week's show, and we gave you all that advertising. That's right. I'm giving you. I'm giving you some some stuff here now. Yeah, yeah. It's a down payment. <laughs> it must be an instrumental version of that. And I need to talk to you about how to categorize my music because it's not working for me. And my, uh, you're talking about me or Troy? You. I'm going to ask Troy about music. <laughs> you could. She said, Troy knows how to play bass. He says, thanks, Jayla. I appreciate you, brother. Is <laughs> that Bob? Yeah. <laughs> he, he must not heard the whole thing. He heard, the, he heard the point where you were right on point. And then you're like, don't believe anything Bob says. <laughs> so, so, but I need, I, I would love to get you two. Bob, you got to let me know when you can come in and then I'll watch you two debate 
Because both of you remember a lot of stuff. Yeah, but she was older than me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bob, you said 65? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Friday, we got to work on that. But then you, you'll get to see Bob at uh, at uh, Polak Johnny's. Okay. Because so I'm sure he'll be there. Uh-oh. 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 I be smoking. Mm. <laughs> she be smoking. <laughs> I be smoking that old brisket. I be smoking that old ham. I be smoking that old salted all over the land. That's the commercial right there. I swear, that's it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pay Uncle Grandfather's dance. I gotta pay Uncle Grandfather's dance on that. Yeah. I hope he recorded that because that was one for Oh, that I wish I knew that was coming up. Oh, we got you. That, that commercial right there. You can do a lot of that. That's yeah. yeah that would be big. Work that out. It definitely works it out. Yeah. Better. Put thoughts on the grandpa. I got to say that because I got to come to the Vegas Grand Mitch back. Yeah, he died today. He would love to do it for the Vegas Grand Mitch. And then he said Lamar posted him, um, tweeted, no, yeah, tweeted. Shared his uh his dance. He was at we dancing at probably I want to say it was at the warehouse. It looked like okay. And somebody from the Ravens recorded him, and then Lamar shared it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because I said when I'm at the games, they show him dancing up at the Ravens uh, perch at the at the uh, oh, Grant? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's on there for about five seconds. Wow. That's that's impressive. And I was yeah. happy he danced for us out here, and he danced out front too at the Belvedere. And what I love is rock dancing. I'm so I look. People needed to see that. People needed to see that for me, man. I enjoy rock. You all right, man? You all right? I, I look. This weekend, no, no, no. More so June 10th. Tell them where you're gonna be, man. At the Polak Johnny's grand opening, man. The official grand opening for Polak Johnny's. I'm actually part of the celebrity eating contest. And then where you gonna be at? You gotta be at Orion Club on Fillmore Avenue. Listen, man. Listen, listen, listen. If y'all can see it, yep. Gemini Jazz in June, man. Come on out, party with your boy. Featuring the Foundation Band. We also have a very, very special guest performer. She's gonna be there with us, man. The address is eleven oh one Fillmore Street, Baltimore, Maryland. Tickets are just thirty dollars. There is a few left. Come on out and check us out. If you haven't seen the Vintage Band perform, you are in for a treat. Are they in for a treat, Troy? They're in for a treat. I, I, I man, I enjoy. It. And if you, if you love, if you love good music, number one, and if you love really good musicians, yes, like, like if even if you're not a dancer, you just want to listen and observe the skill. They were good, man. That what, what was the song? Tunisia, uh, Night at Tunisia. Night at Tunisia. That was my Night favorite. Tunisia. Oh, I love that. Just. Oh, it man. is. That's a really, really good song. And yeah, I'm gonna say something, and I, I hope we have a glitch on Facebook because I don't want it to be recorded. And because you know Troy is gonna make me repeat it again, but I happen to perform with three live bands and one solo artist. Right? Mm -hmm. One of the bands actually have to be um, the Men of Marquee Soul. And I'm gonna tell you, man. Listen, I'm gonna say it the way it is. If if it was a thing where one was lacking, I must put my stamp on it and call him out. I always tell Troy he sucks as a bass player, but I, I can't can't come on the radio and publicly say that and, and disgrace that man like that. All three bands that I perform with are different, and they are very very talented, man. We were we were performing at your um the show you missed with Mesa. And I promise you, Mesa, when she performed, she performed. Uh, I had to start recording now. Go ahead. Uh -huh. When Mesa performed, Yale, mm -hmm. she did her entire show to tracks, right? Prior to her going to the on the stage, I, I mean, literally, as we're standing there and they are introducing her, she said, when I get to Deep Waters, I want you to stop the track, right? Okay. When she said that to me, I'm thinking she's gonna do some acapulco, right? <laughs> oh, oh God. She she's in the oh, middle deep waters, oh, oh, and as I start the track, the yeah. middle monkey soul picked up, and you couldn't tell that she was no longer singing on the track. 
Oh, wow. And she kept performing. The dudes are awesome. And I'm not saying this because me and Troy are fans, our friends. I'm saying this because all of the guys, I'm, I'm not just giving Troy his accolades. I'm talking about, the what's his name? Bishop. 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 The guitar player. Bishop. It's Tony. Tony. And, and then Will. Will. Listen. I said I was proud to be standing in the corner and be able to take a picture with them guys as part of Marquee Soul. So I said all that to say that whenever you see a live performance, whether I'm with Marquee Soul, the Vintage Band, Hi Fi Soul, Hi-Fi, I couldn't think of it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a treat. And we don't even want to put Brian Christopher in the mix. That's who I performed at. Um, the, the place she was just talking about. These performers are absolutely awesome. Who, 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 women, who is, who, what's he, is it their band or? He's, uh, he's solo? an individual artist. Okay. okay. But he has an all-star band. He has like Spider the Drummer. If you look at all of the gentlemen on the wall behind your band, mm -hmm. your banner, mm -hmm. that's all members from um, Brian's band. He has okay. Craig Austin as a part of his band, Spider the Drummer. All of the musicians in his band literally come off tour from working with mainstream artists to perform with him when he performs. There was a question. What's the question? Bob wants to know how many of your performances ended with a restraining order? <laughs> Not a one, because Mesa wanted all his light skin. No, no that would have been one. That would have been one. That would have definitely been one. Can you take a picture for my friend Yale Beverly? She says, who is Yale Beverly? <laughs> I said, my bad. So She doesn't know me by name. She knows me as Boo Thing. <laughs> that was a common day for everybody, because she ain't want to be. I need a you. And Tony and Rock all in the state. Watch the three of y'all live. By Tony needs to restrain the Tony, look, to, First of all, Tony and Rock look like brothers, man. They look like twins. The whole light skin argument thing, man, was killing me, man. I think this to, Tony, she because I think Rock said only only one light skin. Light -skin. skin. <laughs> oh, and then, oh, and Bob says he's going to pull out Johnny's opening, but he might leave and catch the O's game at four. See, see what he did there. We we got an old thing, man. I ain't gonna keep I ain't gonna keep you here much longer, Gail, because I gotta hurry up and um while he's turning up stuff, run with this um this uh pad sure. here. I'm gonna trip you. I'm gonna trip you. All right, listen. Wait, you go in the back. Y'all gonna find out who was the best linebacker in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you. I'm glad you love the food. Definitely. And now I don't owe y'all nothing else. So we can ask me for no more damn food. No, I need brisket now. Hey. We gotta get the brisket. We gotta sample the brisket, the turkey breast, the ham. Oh my this God. Is, this, this is a whole new year. Oh, you're right. It's a whole yeah, new year. That. Yes. Oh, yeah, you got some new seasonings or something. They smoking. We'll work on that one. Yes, that's gonna be hot. Let's put that together. And do a TikTok and everything for yeah, you. Yeah, and definitely get Uncle 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 Grandpa. Yeah. We do like a, a combination of everything, like like a WMEG sponsored TikTok featuring I'll be smoking. And Troy, you can have on your little I'll purple. I some nickels in my pocket. Yeah. In somebody's pocket. Yeah. yeah. You got to have your little purple on Troy and your, your little Oreos hat. Yes. Say it works for me. Yes. We're going to do like a a, 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 a a montage of all the businesses. <laughs> you know what? Bring, bring uh, whatever you can. Unless you just all into the Polak Johns. going to say bring, bring something. Uh, I'll be smoking. I don't know if you got cards or whatever. Make sure you bring some of those. They're on the other side of town. It's a tough crowd. But you on the other side, and you went over there, and you and I'm sure you'll get uh, uh, Lang and uh, Lang and them, cause you know half the time they're over here, it's Lang. But I know like Derek, a lot of them do come on the side because there a lot of them do. You, you know, uh, like um, I'm so bad with names, like Miss Maybell, all like they'll a lot of times they're around Forest Park, Forest Park all the time. Right. They, apparently, there's plays and stuff. And and stuff going on over there, man. Yeah, so I'll definitely be willing to be paid to cater. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much for like that. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. We you appreciate no, you. What I was going on on Forest Park. You, yeah, yeah, you right. Shit, you then come on over. You can just well, it, actually, if you have to move the carts, if you have to move the grills, we'll see what else. <laughs> you can just smoke them and roll on over there. Have to come up the street. That, Put the lighter on. That that. that. That's how it goes. <laughs> Regardless of what Phil and Troy say about you, I disagree. Right, man. It's all the good things we say. I forgot who Phil was. <laughs> <laughs> then I remembered Choo Choo Boy. Yes, Choo Choo. But, but you can see he all in. It's like yeah. he's hoping we're going to make something happen. 
Yeah. It's going to be a good day, man. I was even getting text messages just saying, hey, listen, I got to come see Phil in the tutu. So, yeah. And if he posts, if he get his people to come out, we can, we, we can make a little money, man. And I like the idea. The fact Because I hadn't even thought about, like, tickets for somebody. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, like, charitable stuff we can do. So, yeah, definitely. And Bob said they got to get you on the set of one of the movies. I'm, I look, I'm ready to play a politician. All right. I think he was talking. Like about you playing, I think he was talking about you cooking on the set, though. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, you guys be safe tonight. And we we we're about to get out of here. Yeah. Well, one of us says because I'm taking the ribs. One of us ain't gonna make it. If I were you, I'd change the locks on the cold can get back in here. Yeah, but punish it. I'll let it back in. All right. <laughs> Yo, man, we are about to get out of here. Thank you, Rock. Thank you so much. All that, man. We got it. So, look, the one thing we didn't do, I'm going to hold on to, I got the schedules for the AFC North. We did not go over that. So, we will do that next, next week. Tuesday. Okay. And we know the Orioles won tonight. There's yes. no confusion. They lost. No confusion. So, they lost yesterday. They, um... They win tonight. tonight, so if they win them all, they will win. win the series. Yep. Try to find my O's win. I'm going to go out with my O's win banner. We can go off the air. So set rock. King true. You got to go out. Oh, wait a minute. One more thing. Oh. All right, Bob. Thanks, man. Thanks for so, uh, hanging on this late, too, Bob. We definitely appreciate it, man. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. But whenever you can come in, you need to come on in. We need to see you. Real soon. Yes, definitely, Bob. We are cool. Peace. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My next blessing the man is going to put together some grooves that will make you want to move. Shut hands together for this girl. Key! I'm not an outro, Troy. <laughs>